Yeah, we're ready. Special guest Chris all the Stephano. way from New York. New York. Maybe, New York. maybe you've seen him on the Nick Cannon show. Yeah, Wendy yeah, Williams. Baby. Quickie hey, daytimes. What are you doing on daytime <laughs> talk shows? Ma do you hate selling comedy tickets? What's happening here? Give no. the kid a break. He's no, expanding. Dude. Are you having fun? No. No, 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 no. No, he's only doing black audiences, though. Oh. Wendy Williams, Nick yeah. Cannon. Nick Cannon. And no. you're almost too much for them. No, well, that's... that's <laughs> he's too much. That, I he, watched, said, I he, said a joke, he said a joke on Nick Cannon. Everyone's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's... Like, yes. That's the bit, Brendan. I love that's it. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 what, no, the, that's what I'm doing is, is I, I, I go on these fucking shows, and I'm like, you know what? If I'm going to go on this shit, I'm going to do it on my own terms. They told me, the Nick Cannon producers, they told me that morning. They said, hey, we saw your little Chrissy Daytime TV thing with Wendy Williams. They said, you know, it's funny. We respect it. But they said, but this is a live show. This is a live show. So they said, we really... You know, we put governors on, put governors on. Yeah, so <laughs> wrong thing yeah. to say to a comic. So then, yeah. thing, especially you know, Chris. as soon as the show opened, you know, I just went Chrissy he, Daytimes. I yeah. said, I have, a, I have an uncircumcised penis and it's, uh, it's, you know, it's ready to go. And they, and they just were like, what? Nick Cannon was politely laughing. Did, both shows, yeah. Wendy Williams and um, uh, Nick Cannon show. I, I did not get paid. I was not, <laughs> I was not given the sack you paperwork. Breached, you breached the contract. I just yeah. left. But I will do that if you're I a daytime. You on there. If you're a daytime it's TV funny. show producer, yeah. I'll come in and I'll give you a little CD TV, Chrissy Daytimes. Shake and it up. You shake it up. Shake it up, and then because I'm going to come in there, because the thing is, I believe if you're getting actual laughs on daytime televisions, you're doing yeah. bullshit jokes. Oh, so I'm coming in there just swinging. Do the curveball. Throw a curveball. Now the question was, does it sell tickets? No. So <laughs> no, I know we're struggling in some question. theaters out there. Pick it up. But you know what? You know what? Oh, my, so, hold on. He's doing a huge theater play. Chrissy Theaters, yeah. everybody. Ha the CTE tour. Yeah, yeah. So, so do, you, do you remember um, Gary Shandling? Remember the great, great yeah, yeah, yeah. One yeah. of the best. And Gary Shandling was a guy who just would never. I did a couple shows with him, benefits with him, and he was just always. He stopped doing stand-up for a while, but he, was, he would always bring it, and he was just so smart and everybody else. And he said, um, Jerry Seinfeld said, I never feel comfortable at Hollywood parties. Yeah. And, and Shandling said, well... The minute you feel comfortable at Hollywood parties is the minute you become Billy Crystal, which means you're not funny anymore. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. if you're funny on a on a fucking yeah. daytime show, yeah, if you're that yeah. safe, yeah. get the fuck out. You're boring to me. Yeah. Once, yeah. once you've gone to, to Hollywood, like you're out of the crew, dude. Yeah, you like can't. You, do if it. you've gone Hollywood, you can't be on here. Yeah, yeah, no, they were like, they were like, hey, can we hear some of your jokes like in the rehearsal? I was like, no. I'm gonna do them for the first time so live, weird. baby. Are you out of your mind? Were you were you were you <laughs> contrasting that beautiful hey. green with your eyes? Hey, your hey, hey hold on. No, hey, you're you're going a little Hollywood on us, though. Yeah. No, the I would, theater plays. It's, you're kind. You're messing with the, the kid's the, ambitious. He's having yeah, fun I'm with it. To get out he there. does it in a fun way. I'm trying to get out there because yeah. you know somebody's got to pay that alimony. So I I went on that show. That Nick Cannon show, they told me to dress professionally nice, and I went on a, with a sweatshirt that said Bing Bong. I went on with a Bing oh, Bong that sweatshirt. Is that, is that your gender? That is that your gender pronoun? <laughs> yeah. Bing Bong. Uh, bing bong. And that's what I did. I went on a show with Bing, I swear to God, Bing Bong sweatshirt and pants from Old Navy with mismatching socks oh, and, wow. and low top uh, Nikes. That hurts and, my feelings. Yeah, and I didn't. Nick Cannon had on probably a $5,000 suit. Yep. He my dress. situation had an assistant that was pressing his clothes, and they asked me several times, they said, Do you have any other outfits? I said, Absolutely not. They said, Well, we <laughs> don't know if we can license that i said not my problem babe yeah that's what i said <laughs> you're probably not coming back yeah because i because the thing is i think you have to go into those things knowing like i don't give a shit if you never invite me back i'm doing this for me and my clips i'm not doing this for the audience Correct. I mean, yeah, yeah. Fuck, Correct. yeah about the I audience get, I, had a, I had an acting teacher who told he told the class he goes when you go into an audition when you go to an audition you you tell them how it goes you tell them well you well, he goes you now now you'd go. I got the you. I got the spirit of what yeah, you're yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got the spirit, yeah. right? We take a little of this, yeah. take a little of this. Not Brad Pitt. Yeah. You tell them how it goes. So we had this fucking dumb dumb in class. There's always a couple. Part of being in an acting class is watching a train wreck. Right. This was a dumb dumb. Well, no one's gonna make it. Yeah. Well, no, yeah. no one's gonna and, make it. And uh -huh. you have the ones that have their their dream boards and all that and this is one of those people and apparently they went in and i only know this because i have a friend who was a producer on the show and said she comes in and she goes this is how it goes guys and everybody goes huh and and they go that that's kind of bold and she goes all of you you sit here i sit there i do, i sit there and so they went 
Oh, we're good. Yeah. So it'd be like this, and and she decided to shake the room up a sure. little bit. You yeah. guys are gonna. And she has no credentials, me. nothing. No. Yeah. And they went. We're we're fine sitting here. And she was like, Oh. Yeah. Okay. She didn't think about that. And then she that. started shaking. She didn't think about that. They went. Well, no. Shut up, bitch. Yeah. Do the thing. Yeah. Yeah. So she, she went, no. things. No, things never worked out. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that was. But Chris, 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 Chris Fiesta, fun, hold on. Oh, but uh, you missed the Cabas fight campaign, which will reach a million views, whatever. But I know. Uh, instead, I did the Tampa Theater. How'd, that, how'd Tampa go? It actually was great. Shout out to fans of Tampa Theater. Oh. Missed a sell-up by 100 tickets, so not terrible. Not terrible. Uh, 1,100 yeah. out of 1,200. That's pretty big that's boy. Big Tampa, yeah. Tampa's, Tampa's a good, boy. good market, that's too. That's big boy, 1,100. No, that's 1, good. That's big boy. Yeah, yeah, big boy. And I say 1,100, so it really was 980, but... You know, we're on... We're, we're gonna, we're, <laughs> it's like, it's like your, it's like your <laughs> That's comic so. That's comic so, dude. It's like your Listen, golf score. It's, that's what it is. Yeah. Really, with I, shot a, I shot a 90. What do you yeah. Dude, yeah. I sold out five shows in Miami. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, you know, I, I made sold out three, you know, though. I, it's fine, I, I four. but you sold out uh, yeah. three. He and I do that. He and I do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I go, dude, sold, sold dude, out. five sold fucking sold out. I go, damn, that's crazy. Will he tell me that? I'll go online to BrianCon.com. I'll look through if it's sold out. Four out of five ain't bad. <laughs> why do but we do that to each other? What's because we lie? Because we're liars. I don't know. Because but we're horrible people. That's why we wind up where we're at. Yeah, like, might we're, just, that. we're shit. What, dude? If we were decent human beings, we'd be doing. You know what I mean? I'd be a teacher or so. I'd be yeah. Chin. Chin's a good guy. <laughs> Chin's Thanks. a good guy. And I said, Great. I said before the show started, Chin, you've gotten taller. What's your secret? He, his neck is fucked up, and they started wearing a neck brace. Did oh, you have shit, a neck do you think that's actually well? yeah. possible? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I've been doing traction where it just pushes your head up. Gen six I have seven device right Gen there. Gen six seven. Really? Uh, Gen six. I seven. knew something was wrong with Chrissy's uh, neck the minute he walked in. Yeah. You walked in, you had your arm, your your hands were in front of your knees. You have very long arms. Thank you. So your arms were. <laughs> I don't know if that's a. I mean, it's complicated. No, it's hard work and dedication. No, you got good reach. You got good reach. <laughs> yes, I do. And you good your genetics. your knuckles were sort of. You walked in a little bit like a knuckle dragger, right? Hundred percent. Yeah. A mouth breather. I, I said something's wrong with his. Yes. You have, he's got bad posture today. And it's because of, I have a neck issue. Now, I think my neck issue could be directly related to how much time I'm spending on a phone, cramped over computers, you know, dealing, I have a six-month-old baby, seven-month-old baby, so We're on the floor dealing with that. Yeah. Uh -huh. But I did, I pulled, and I'm going to be honest with you, I'm honest with the group, I pulled my neck on the eighth pull-up of the first set. Strict pull-up. This, this morning? This morning? And you're strict. Hands no, 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 no. Here or hands Three, here? four days ago. Hands this no, way. He, he's yeah. very strict. Full, clean you know, as long my you know, stretch my sure. long my long eight, yeah. arms, and then all the way chin That's over eight. the bar was one, Jeez. and on the eighth one, popped popped my yeah. vertebrae. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. first set, yeah. first set. Hey, first you, set. Hey, how yeah. old, we're the similar age, right? I'm thirty uh, seven years old. Nineteen eighty four. I'm thirty eight. Eighty yeah. three. Yeah. We're getting older, Daddy. I, I, older, out, I didn't blow out one hamstring. I blew out both, both hamstrings. Yeah, and to blow out both hamstrings, I mean, it's just a funny it's thing. Torque. It's like it's torque. It's, it's torque. It's, 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 torque. Like, it's like it's like you got to be a fucking <laughs> idiot. <laughs> to blow out both of them. <laughs> you know, it's to torque. blow out both, it's like it's like you're fully retarded. Yeah. But you know, I agree. That's what it is. Straight up peanut butter falcon. Yes. But yeah. did, yes. did Daddy not come running into the studio this morning? It, 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 it wasn't running. It was good. It was good. I I thought he was so out. I begged him to warm up. There was none of that. And then when I saw him pop both, I went, well, we're done for the tough mutter. Because I, 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 I do the train. thick mutter on Saturday. Mm -hmm. We're all doing it. And you're, you're going to do it with pop hammies and all. Da Daddy's getting better. He's a tough kid. He's been rehabbing and stuff, though. He, he, rehabbing. I'm, I'm Jose Canseco right yes. now. Yes. I, I, I haven't had a carb in two and a half weeks. I got more illegal supplements rolling through this body to, feel, to cure this hammy than yeah. fucking but Alex but is, Rodriguez. Is carnivore no, good dude, for you're good. A, a endurance thing? Oh, is that yeah. good? Oh, it is? Oh, yeah. I thought it wasn't. I never felt better. Really? No, really? No, no, no. I thought you need carbs for long distance. No, no, no. Stuff. Excuse me, 55. No, it's, 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 no, I've, no I'm, I'm just saying it's like the, the nutrients you get from red meat and all I'm that stuff. I'm not 55 stuff. yet. We're gone. Do, do on you Wednesday. Are you not 55? You turn 55 on Wednesday? On Wednesday? Wow. Wow. 55 with, you ready him, for this? I don't him, know what the fuck is going him, on. Him getting older? I don't, I don't do TRT. Uh, yeah. Um, and what are you, 29 waist? I got a, I got a 32 waist at the end 30, of the day. 30, because you got a bit of a dumper. I got an ass. Oh, on he me. does have an apple bar. I got an ass on me. Holy crap, B. Only four teams remain in the NFL playoffs, and that means only four teams left for you to bet on, dude, with DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner, the NFL, counting down to Super Bowl 56 right here in Los Angeles, California. New customers can get 56 to 1 odds on any team. Bet just $5 and get 280 in free bets if your team wins. Bet on the Rams. Not a new customer? Cool. You can experience the conference championships with the same game parlays. Combine multiple bets from the same game for a bigger payout. 
The more legs you add, the more money you win. DraftKings is safe, secure, reliable, best of all, deposit, withdrawal whenever you want. Download DraftKings Sportsbook right now. All right, download the app, use promo code FIGHTER, and get 56 to 1 odds on any NFL team. Bet just $5 and win 280 in free bets if your team wins. That's promo code FIGHTER for 56 to 1 odds at DraftKings Sportsbook. Bet on my Rams. The official sports betting partner of the NFL must be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Minimum $5 deposit, $1 wager required. One per customer. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Ballsy. It's about My balls. balls, dude. Look, at the end of the day, you want to take care of your balls. Your balls are prone to odor, sweat, to irritation. Upgrade your nuts. If you got the balls, ballsies, your freaking customer. I mean, or your product is what I should say. They make quality, long lasting products formula that keep you fresh, comfortable, confident. Talk about the products. Dude, Tell you got to check out ballsies. My balls are freaking glistening, man. Well, we love ballsy. They make men's products for the man parts, the groin area, the products. I'm glad you asked. Don't think for one second that ballsy is just trimmers. They've got your sack covered with a ball wash, sack spray, and so much more. It's for all the bros, man, and it's great ingredients, all right? You're not sure where to start? Why don't you take their little quiz about your nuts? They customize and tailor it just for you, man. It's made in the U.S. of A, all right? And they guarantee with over 200,000 satisfied customers a 30-day money-back guarantee. Good gift. You've got Good to gift. give balls a try, all right? Wow. So keep the funk off your junk. Right now, if you go to ballwash.com, Put promo code FIGHTER20. You'll receive 20% off. That's 20% off plus free shipping when you go to ballwash.com. Promo code FIGHTER20. Let's have an apple bar. I got an ass on me. You know what bumps me out, though, more than anything? His birthdays. Why? Why? How long are we going to do this? I know. He, right. he only has maybe 10 more good. Well, because um, you're only 65. We can't. Well, uh, 55, we can't be talking about 55, dicks. And, yeah. uh, yes, we can. At 65? We'll see what happens. Celebrate. At, at 55, I, I, I am, my body is much more delicate, so I do lots of PT stuff, like mm -hmm. for my back and neck, so that stuff, because that stuff's The rhomboid stuff. Yeah. All that shit. But you, you but never got up. 65 be? You think we're still going to be fucking around? Man, I don't know. You're depressing me, man. <laughs> that, I really, I don't even acknowledge your birthday. I want to yeah. pretend you're Peter I'm Pan. I'm the same way, dude. And I am. And I still got lots of energy and I'll be running that Tough mutter, No problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it might be a problem for me. I'm going to do it. What, what's your sign? I'm an Aquarius. Thank, thank you for What are you? Advice, dude. I'm a Virgo. Virgin. Pisces. September? Yeah. Uh, August 26th, baby, 1984. Same birthday as Macaulay Culkin. Really? Oh, what well, can oh, you do? Home alone. That's huge. Yeah. Now, yeah. Do, do, do you uh, did you have some speed? Did you have you a lot of fat? Because you're German. A lot of people don't realize that Chris Stefano is very, very, very little he played Italian. Basketball. Played mostly, basketball. Mostly, mostly German. Mostly Famer. German. Famer. A little, uh, a, a hint of Irish and British. Yep. So, but kid. mostly German. And um, and I, 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 I basketball. I willed it to happen. I could jump. I used because right now I'm, I'm sitting here at a comfortable 242 pounds. Yeah. yeah. Right. Hey, hey, hey. Are we 42 or are you like 45, 46? You think? Let's go 250. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and, and, you gotta keep I, a man honest I, on this. Yeah, yeah. you know, and I'm probably 62. And I also okay. had a blueberry muffin toasted with butter this morning. Yeah. God, that's good. Why yeah. would you do that? Because I'm depressed, Brendan. <laughs> why? Because my tickets aren't selling on the theater tour. And I was putting two big venues at too high ticket prices, but that's why. And who told fun. you? I know. Who are you next? Yeah, you? baby. Well, nobody <laughs> takes it more personally than he and I. Yes. When, no, no, no. no, no. Here's no the, nobody's. When does this Nobody frustrates me more than Chrissy D. Why? What? No, what? Yeah. Because he doesn't listen to you. He's the he's the next. He's he's it. He's the next guy out of New York. He went, it went Schultz. It went Tim Dillon. You know, it's it's you know these guys. Yeah. Are Shane Gillis, fucking Mark Norman. The the New York guys are crushing now. And Chrissy D's more talented than everybody. Thank and you. he doesn't fucking listen. <laughs> I don't listen. But hey, listen. I want to I want to hit him. That's you dude, want to rough him up. Hit me, dude. Don't do I that. Need to come. No, I can't. My, my <laughs> oh hand. God! What the fuck? What? Hold on. What is the thing? What dude? the fuck? You want to knock me out? You better have a fucking visor on because you're gonna get one in the eye. Chris, I had no oh, idea. Wow. Yeah, dude. Oh, it's like a porcupine. But you, you better, it's like a porcupine. But his, come weird, his nose. Damn. Wire, your wires got. Crossed you said that so no, strong. You, you're, you got crossing the crib, dude. You hit me in the chin. It's like sticking your finger on my prostate. Oh, oh, hanging out. That's oh, a man. Yeah, especially a guy like you. You don't want to hit that. 
to drop to. Dude, yeah, when you dude. smelled her perfume It'll, at the same time. Yeah, dude, but I'm, you, I'm actually dribbling right now a little bit. I would assume you came in all bunched up with your neck and your back because mm-hmm. your schedule is fucking nuts. Why are you doing all this, man? It's okay. Like, so, chill out. Know, and this comes from a guy who doesn't chill I out. I got 100 podcasts. I know. No, that mm-hmm. that's... Uh, it's it's too much. I think I what happened was let me let me when does this episode come out tonight? tonight. Today. Oh tonight! Look at that. Well, so here's the students. good news. Here's the good news on the Chrissy Theaters Everybody Tour, the hashtag CTE Tour. We got I'm Chrissy Northeast Borgata. We got two shows sold out. Beacon Theater, New York City, twenty seven hundred. New sold Jersey, out. not New bad. Yeah. Twenty seven hundred is not bad. Big you boy. sold out the Beacon. That's a big. That's one. a big deal. And that one's gone. Can't That's get a a tickets. Dude, Borgata's big too. And you're two. depressed. Your boys two thousand. Your boys done Borgata. And you're Borgata's depressed big now. Too. You're depressed. Well, hold on. Get, let him finish. Let's get. I'd to, be depressed. Let's get too. to the next phase. Let's let's start going Midwest. Let's go Texas. To, well, no, well, no, Texas. I did good. Austin, we added with Vulcan. We sold a lot of tickets. That's not a huge deal. Not a huge deal. But but we're fifteen hundred by the end of the thing. So that's good. Terrible. Not making money. Here's where we get. Here's where we get a little dicey. Okay. Warner Theater, Washington D.C. That's another big boy. Nineteen hundred, <laughs> been on sale six months. Got about three hundred fifty tickets sold. Yeah, that's a that's damn. a goner. That's a tough. Now that's I would fe- cancel. I would very that's very, February eleventh. Hey, Chrissy, hey, people very Washington D.C. People Washington D.C. You might get a Chris Scott COVID email next. <laughs> yes, <year. laughs> and, and that's what I told him to do. <laughs> then we got here's another here's another fun one. Then the very next day, February twelfth, we got the Tabernacle Theater in Atlanta. Another big boy. Where twenty one hundred, and we got. Brr, 235 tickets. <laughs> that's, that's a chocolate city. Uh, you're out of here. Uh, that's a, cho- that's a chocolate that? city. That? That's a chocolate Where city. At? Yes. Atlanta. That's a chocolate oh, I'm city. I'm in Atlanta. That's yes. a little tough sometimes because here's the thing. What my stuff guess is so Chris. 3,000 tickets. You're right. Yeah. My guess yeah. is my guess is Bubba that you're you're in certain areas in blue states you you might have because they're not listening to that man shit. No, yes. New York's blue though. Uh, yeah, so but it's my hometown. Though. Yeah, but New York but also has a lot. I, also, I, I got New the York's entire FDNY coming to the show. Yeah, oh, exactly. Exactly. I got the Fuck entire yeah. fire department. Base. Exactly. Yeah, you got you got a, I mean, New York's got a lot of you know yeah. old school Italian Irish guys that are all yeah. over that. They're all coming. I mean, you got Jersey. Forget it. It's a, they think it's blue, but it's not in no. a lot of ways. Yeah, but 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 I'm talking about <laughs> in a lot of places like California <laughs> and shit like San Francisco. Yeah. Bro, yeah. no, but here's on. where we get good again, no. though. But then we got the Agora Theater in Cleveland and the Royal Oak in, in Detroit. Those are um, March 4th and 5th. Donnie DePetta, a.k.a. Uh, Chubby uh, Fred El Chapo. Uh-huh. It's, it, yeah, yeah Fred Mercury Mercury without AIDS. No, also, also known as Freddie Mercury. The third Mario, bro. Yeah, the third By the way, Mario, he, got, he comes up to me and goes, hey, man, we went before. I go, well, how am I supposed to recognize you? <laughs> yeah, I love the with mustache. That perfect mustache. Yeah. Wait, so how are we doing in those? Yeah. So the Agora Theater uh, and 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 the Royal Oak Theater in Detroit, Michigan, March fourth and fifth. We're doing pretty go- good on those. We're about fifty to sixty percent sold of the room. Uh-huh. About a month out, those probably might go. Those are when it go. gets dicey again, though. <laughs> there we go. Is, there we go. Is, is um, we're getting pretty hairy at the Wynn in Las Vegas. <laughs> 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 That's for you! <laughs> March 24th, we're getting hairy! Oh, <laughs> why? Oh, why? Because Katy Perry's next door? Yeah, because we were going up against a little woman named Adele. <laughs> but, but she canceled, she canceled thank she canceled. God. Oh, she did um, cancel her March, show. March 17th and 18th at the Moore Theater in birthday. Seattle and the Revolutionary Hall in Portland. We're not doing terrible, not doing great. Where it goes a fucking nosedive is the Egyptian room April 8th in Indianapolis that's oh another big oh, boy Indi- yeah we're, we're have you ever do you even sell out clubs in Indy no I don't th- <laughs> do I know don't have 13 tickets but sold Baba, at that Baba, really? Baba, here's another issue yeah. A lot of people don't have money in those areas. Yeah. That you're talking about. And I went $160, $160 for the front row. Oh, you're right. So oh, I went a oh, little. Start, don't get oh, me started on no. sticky <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah. Okay, so let's do this. Well, I love how honest right. you are. Uh, the, average, no, the average American yeah. has $500 in the bank. Yep. You, you're you asking, you're asking somebody to spend that, their, their entire bank. The economy's account. doing all right. It's not that. It's, yeah. it's just... It, Wrong mark. He, he, he went from clubs to giant theater. Oh, here's another good one. Skip the middle. Here's another fun one. I sold out four clubs at Zany's. In Chicago, okay? Last mm, year, still four clubs in. I said, hey, yeah. I sold out four shows uh, in Chicago. No, Chicago theater. Clubs. I said, let's go to the Chicago Theater. 36 hundo. And uh, it, that one's not, that's March 12th. That one's not You've doing terrible. It. Listen, that one we got about 14, 1500 tickets sold. So it's not terrible, but not I should have just done the Vic, which is a thousand seats, and then we uh, added a show. But instead, I went right to the Chicago <laughs> Theater. <laughs> but, but I like your mentality. So, so, I like your mentality. So I skidded off a little bit. What'd you say? I like your mentality. Like though. that mentality. But then your your management should be like, oh, dude, you 100% you should be doing those. Why don't we play it safe? Well, I'll tell you what, Brendan. Yeah. I'm sitting here right now as a free agent, baby. No, you're not. I cleaned no, you're not. the house. No, you're not. Really? I had you're to, baby. I said, Don DePet is my fucking agent now, and you're going to deal with his mustache. That's who's have, booking the gigs. Why don't you have Brendan Schaub manage you? 
I should. I'm going to have Christian Paolo manage me because I want to get in the black community through his brother. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey I, I got something for you. So, uh, so they booked me at the Hard Rock in Oklahoma, and it seats, I think, 2,400. It's big. It seats mm-hmm. like 2,400. And I was like, oh, Oklahoma, they give you a guarantee, you know, casinos. Oh, it's big. Sure, you, get, you see the money? So they go, if you sell out, you get this much. I'm like, holy fuck, if I could sell out. So we do all this marking around. Look all at that way. number. We get there uh, on Friday. The show's on Saturday. And on Friday, I look at no tickets are for sale. I'm like, holy fuck, we your boy sold out. I'm already uh-huh. thinking about, I'm telling my openers, dude, you guys are getting bonuses. We're mm-hmm. selling all this stuff out. We get to the show. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah, we, we get to the show. I'm waiting in the back. I hear, <laughs> there's a tornado alarm. There's a tornado thing going on. So the line outside goes scattering. They run. They fucking sprint. I'm like, well, that ain't good. Oh, well, we're sold out. I'm sure they'll come back. So I'm sitting there, and the, uh, <laughs> the owner or the like, the guy who managed stuff, cowboy hat, he comes in and goes, you, you, bo- you boys ready? I go, no, there's a, there's a tornado alarm, bro. They, nobody's out there. I looked out. There's six people in the crowd, dude. It's sold out. And he goes, is that a fact? I go, yeah, it's a fact. I'm not going out there, dude. Uh, there's six people out there. I'm going to wait till they come back from the tornado. He goes, no, you're going to start. I go, no, I promise you, I'm not. Those six people, you can bring them in the green room. I'll do the show here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to that giant theater. Yeah. And I go, uh, and then he goes, okay. And he goes, uh, we'll figure it out. And he goes, here's your check, too. I'm not going to stay for the show. Here's your check. Give him the check. I look at it. I go, oh, oh, real quick, sir. It's sold. I know there's tornado and all that, but it's sold out, and I'm supposed to get the bonus. And he goes, oh, yeah? I go, yeah. He goes, come talk to my office. So I'm like, all right, go to his office. I sit down, and he goes, sir, he <laughs> I'll never forget this. He goes, Here, here's the facts. Here's the facts. I don't want to say I embarrass you in front of your friends. I don't want to embarrass you in front of your friends. Around here, nobody know who you are. And I go, <laughs> I go, what? He goes, nobody know who you are. I go, this is, but, oh, dude. I, go, <laughs> I didn't oh, hear this story. Yeah. I go, oh. but I sold out. He goes, not even close, son. Not even close. <laughs> he goes, we reserved some tickets because it wasn't selling well. We reserved some for the whalers and the people that play out there. And it just wasn't selling here. He goes, now maybe in New York, California, they know who you are. Around here, nobody knew who you are. And this is what you're going to do. You're going to take this money. Not a lot. You're going to take this money. You can go out there and give one hell of a show. I go, there's six people out there. He goes, I don't care. You're going to go out there. He goes, because you're on Native American time. He goes, and we can't start late, son. You're on Native American time. Wow. And wow. I went, this guy wasn't fucking okay. around. Okay. And I went out there. But how did you? What did it say? So sold depressing. out on the website? Like how did you? Why did you think it was sold out? Because it said there's. Because it didn't say sold out. It just you couldn't buy tickets. So I assumed sold out. So of course, of course, of course, dude. So one, wait, those, uh, were, those were the reserved tickets then? No, it just wasn't selling at all. And they're like, oh, so they, it down. oh, so they, oh, they, two days before they pulled all tickets. Chris, do you down. have a do you have a special? And, the, and then I'll never forget this. On Comedy Central, I'll never forget. He kept special, saying, though. I'll never forget. Ephraim, I will never forget this. He kept saying. Nobody knew who y'all. <laughs> Nobody know who he y'all. Said, are. New York, California. They New York, California. He goes, you. Nothing I'm sure that's kind. fine here. And he goes, son, I'll give you this. Yeah, tornado warning. That ain't fun. And the Oklahoma <laughs> Sooners are playing today. That ain't good for you either. Yeah. I go, well, you booked me, man. He goes, it is what it is. Yeah. Well, that. You oh, know, he said we might have you back. Did that oh, he goes, good. you go out there and give a good show. We might have you back. Yeah. I, went, I ain't never <laughs> come. Was it back. actually a good show though? Probably the crowd yeah, was, was probably fun. happy to see you. Yeah, it was fun. But that'll that'll make you feel so heavy. That'll make you like. <laughs> no, hey, nobody know who you are. I need to do cocaine. Nobody know that, who you are. I, I, yeah. And then going to my the deep then going my openers like, dude, you remember I said I was giving you those bonuses and shit. <laughs> Dude, dude, that ain't happening. Dude, because right. Daddy didn't get paid. You remember in the dark days for Daddy uh, when when I wasn't doing fighter and the kid, and nobody knew when I was coming, and I was I called him up because I had no one else to talk to. I called him up and I was like, I want to I want to kill. I want I want to kill. I want to kill everybody and myself as well. Why? Like, because you're in Seattle on a Thursday and there's seven. There and you go, <laughs> Brian. Brian, there's not, there's not much. I, I know you're really pissed. There's nothing I can say that's gonna make you pissed. But you try to give me some excuse. But you know it is COVID. Oh, yeah, fuck. and I, I, I would have done if you said Brian. I, if you said Brian, you, you can do all that cocaine. That's what I would have needed to go out there. But yeah. you know what, Daddy did. Daddy there. studied ticket sales and venues. Mm-hmm. And so I think shit. that there's a business side to it. Yeah, where I think, um, 
yeah, now it's one. Some of these theaters going to be it's going to be the Chrissy the Chrissy Curtains show because they're going to just have to put the curtain down and some of that, and then it'll make it feel that's that's what you want to hear from your agent. Oh, it's going to feel good though. We have the curtain down know, they, and about eighty percent of the audience hey, is hey, curtained off. They go no, dude. What they do the curtains? It's going to feel like a tight room. It's going to look packed. Sure it is. It's like yeah. No, I got. I think I think it's about you know when you here because you know what happened is I was like, it was the first time I ever really started selling tickets, you know, ever in my career. So I was like, oh, mm -hmm. adding shows at comedy clubs, every comedy club I went to, sold out, added show, it's all good, good, good. So I was like, let's go, let's let's do theaters, let's try it. And I realized I'm a I'm a regional guy. I realized that <laughs> in, in the Northeast, no. I mean, I mean, I'm, uh, in New York, I can do it. Like, yeah. we're, we're good, I'm good. But then when it gets a little hairy when you go to these other cities where like you know like you said no money or maybe you know they just different don't know politics, who Indianapolis, yeah. different politics politics I, it's not that you can't do those it's that in in your management which is fucking awful which what in, can you do in those new york markets mm -hmm. and the east coast markets you should be doing that the rest you, you shouldn't you shouldn't be making those leaps no not yet makes you look bad because then the fans come like Dude, there's nobody there. Oh, yeah, no, it's you know brutal. So was the move to just keep it to the clubs for a, a bit, even if you are adding No, there's shows? money There's money in theaters, but it's only if you can sell a certain amount of tickets. Yeah. Like in New York and wherever New, New York, Jersey, Boston, Boston, New York, Boston, yeah. Boston Connecticut, Philly, any Northeast Philly, Philly. you're well, good. Well, Philly, we're in a little bit of trouble, too, because Philly, what we did was we did the we did the Philly punchline in August, and we sold out eight shows. So that's nice. Sell out eight. Very nice. That's yeah. nice. Yeah. Because yeah. that's but, 400 people. That, that was 3,000 tickets. But, yeah. but then you're doing Atlantic... City, right? But then we're doing the Borgata. January who goes there? Sold out. Who all goes there? And then Philly. what we did is we said it's April. We said April 29th. We're going to do a casino in Bethlehem that seats 2,000. Then the very next day, April 30th, we're going to do the Met, which holds 4,000 people. On. This is all. And it, this is all in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Well, who who's doing this to you? I, I, who's doing <laughs> this? <laughs> face. Yeah. The Chris, agent. Chris. Like yeah. I, I, I would have told you. No, I mean, no, no, no. I would have told you this is the craziest shit I've ever heard in my yeah. life. No, no, no. I tell, I tell my agent, I'll go, dude, I think we should do Staples. Like, yeah. I want to do, you know, but yeah, no, he's no. like, no, 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 dumbass. There's a plan. Yeah. No, you don't dude, go dude, from dude, here dude. to there. We fuck, so I Ebra. fucked up. So what we're going to do, Correct. what you'll see in Philly most likely is what you're going to see in email about a little thing we like to call a venue change. And your tickets are probably going to be good uh, for, for that. We're purchased <laughs> already for the change. Met. And we're Chris. probably going to be going to the Fillmore, <laughs> which is a little bit smaller. And when I say a little bit smaller, about 3,000 seats small. There you go. <laughs> and we're going to start there. And we're going to see how it goes. Yeah. And we're also going to move the show because I just did 18,000 shows in Philly in August. And then I did another sh show in Borgata. We're going to move that date from april 30th 2022 to i want to say september 2023 yeah yeah that's what yeah. we're gonna do yeah because we're gonna need to give the people of philadelphia a rest some time and you're, yeah. gonna rest. Need, and you're gonna need new jokes and a new act and stuff yeah, because i don't have i have an hour special out brian asked me a uh, uh, size 38 waist on comedy central which only the people in this room ever saw because yeah. comedy central i mean it's just it's a literally it's an underground YouTube. network you yeah. net netflix said no to me hbo show everybody said no to my new hour of course, of course. so we're gonna just go put it on the tube yeah. is what yeah, you're gonna, gonna, gonna have to put more. it on the youtube and that's what's gonna sell more tickets that's what's probably gonna sell more tickets so 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 i'm fine with it but yeah it's an interesting interesting thing because it, you know i the one positive thing i'll say about absolutely fucking failing at some of these theaters uh -huh. is it's not a, I've it's I've proven at least to myself it's really not about the money I do do comedy because I truly love it because I'm making even the guarantee yeah. on these theaters you're going to make good. money yeah. and I'll bring money back home to my family but I feel like such a pitiful depressed there's loser nothing worse. so not. there's actually a, a, a positive thing where I'm like oh at least I love stand up and, yeah. and yeah. I always knew I did but it's like just a confirmation to be like I love doing the podcast but I'm a stand up comic yeah. that's yeah. what I always want to do and you learned something you learned, I learned yeah. something I learned, by the way here's an, I learned, an, here's an, an agent, agent for you. his name is Justin Edbrook it's CAA. Yes, that's I'm, the I guy. saw him last night. That's the guy. Yeah, oh, yeah. I was with him last night, man. He's fucking great. I was with him last He'll night. He'll never do that to you. Good, just good, Justin Edbrook. He good. he's very smart, and he will. I know, I know. We we were talking, we were talking last night. Yeah. So I'll see what happens, dude. I'll see what happens. But I'm out here on the pod. If you guys want to come to the theater show, ChristyComedy.com. Yeah. Uh, you know, you might get some emails about, you know, some last minute COVID changes, <laughs> but don't worry. Your tickets will and, be honored. And, and if you have a problem, you can DM me or, you know, <laughs> Ticketmaster. Yeah, or yeah. DM me. Yeah, yeah. Or Ticketmaster. Ticket but well, don't worry, babe. We'll take care of you. But and, Borgata and Beacon. I, I love how honest you are about it. Like, because you're just like, fuck you it. You have to fuck be. Because what I, I mean, dude, yeah. they, they, my eight, and then, and then I was, and how about this? Then I was, uh, uh, in, I did the Tampa Theater last week, which was great. Told you, missed, missed it by, you know, 100, 300 sale tickets, but not bad. But, you know, 84% of the room, not bad. 
Um, so so we got a nice lift on the meet and greet. We got we got all the money in the meet and greet, so it's nice. Um, and by the way, people on the Tampa meet and greet, I do want to tell you, I had slight body aches, but nothing to be concerned about. Um, 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 but but the day before that, I was supposed to be co-headlining the Hard Rock in Orlando with Andrew Dice Clay, and Andrew Dice Clay calls me a week before, and he goes, "Baby," he goes, "Chris." And he goes, uh, I, I can't do the show with you next week. I got Bell's palsy. So I was like, oh, shit, okay. Bell's so, palsy? Bell's palsy. You guys know what that is? <laughs> yeah, it's like when, when you're, yeah, when you're, you're face, one side of your face, face is like, You're not doing stand-up with Bell's no. palsy. Yeah. So I said, all right. I said, fair enough. So he said, but we're going to do a show together in March. We're going to rebook show in March. I said, absolutely. I said, I'll cram it right in there with the rest of my shows that are fucking bombing. <laughs> I said, no problem. I said, so so let's do it. So I, I said, he said, we're going to do it in March. I said, okay. So then my agent calls me. An hour later, and he says, hey, I got you a, an offer uh, uh, for October at the Hard Rock in Orlando. I said, well, I don't want to be a dick to Dice. I'm not going to do that to Dice. I said, I, 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 I wanna, I, I'm going to do the show with him in March. He was like, what are you talking about? I said, Dice called me and said, we're doing the show together in March. He goes, Dice booked himself for March, baby. You're doing a solo show. He's doing a solo show oh, in March. Wow. So Shit. you're fucking out of here. So I said, wow, that one hurt. But <laughs> so now hey, Chrissy, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on sale October 22nd at the Hard Rock in Orlando. If you want to come, I'm going to be wearing a fucking Mickey Mouse hat. I'm going to do the whole show with a noose around my neck. <laughs> yeah. Chrissy, how did you line up with Andrew Dice Clay? He messaged me. Andrew Dice Clay oh, reached huh. out to me. I, I, I love Andrew Dice Clay. I'm a big fan, but he messaged me. He's a legend. Me. He messaged me and was saying all these complimentary things and was like, I want to do a show with you. I want to so we we booked this show and then it just it just fell through. But it it is it is just funny how like, you know, that's the whole thing with this business is like you just fucking ups and downs, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think I'm on an up, but it's just funny. It's just you're funny to up. like when you see you the ticket sales, jabs. you're like, that feels down when you because some of these, some of these, you know, the, the agent will send, you know, the venue size, the ticket sales, and then percentage. And some of these percentages are in the single digits. Yeah. I mean, some of these It'll percentages look like the weather in Buffalo. <laughs> and that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But how and how, but how's yeah. the pods going? The pods are great. Chrissy Chaos every Tuesday, 11 a.m. Eastern time, and Hey Babe with Sal Volcano every Thursday, 11 a.m. Eastern time. Those are good. And, and that's the beautiful part about potting is you know the patreon patreon.com slash christy comedy dude i did mushrooms on my patreon mm -hmm. last week and because i do a thing on the patreon my patreon called the chris and eddie show mm -hmm. where i Who's used to eddie? take edibles which we call oh, eddies right. where i would you know say this chris and eddie show i never did drugs i would take an edible for the patreon and we do a show but now it's like morphing into things but last week i took a a uh, uh um an, uh mushrooms on the podcast, on, with like chocolate wow. mushrooms, or yeah, just what, what, was what was that? What was that? Chris like? and Eddie show, dude. It reshaped my brain because yeah. my brain. I used to get all bent out of shit. It's a positive and a negative. Yeah. What happened? Because the positive was it reshaped my brain yep. and kind of redid some pathways to like not beat myself up so much and just be who cares, go with the flow. But it also said to myself to just be happy with my my body and my life. So now I've been eating a lot of muffins because I don't <laughs> care anymore. Because I'm like, I'm happy, good. you know, I'm happy having tits. But I'm, what's going to happen is I'm going to wake up one day, yeah. and be like, Am I in a fat suit? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm well, sweating. You know, you know psilocybin now with the, with old people looking at death, it's got better results than almost anything. Yep. Mike Tyson, you know, he did that whole thing with this woman where he they went through this whole thing. Yeah, that dude fucking said that's what he credits that for his sort of peace of mind. No, but there are a lot they of also what, the, the what, they also do with the fraud, they also do with depression and PTSD, soldiers. PTSD, PTSD, PTSD soldiers. soldiers. Uh, but they found CT him. for fighters. Yeah, I'm they found you, dude, incredible. I'm so results. open about whatever the things going on. I'm telling you, dude, the mushrooms are the thing. And next week for the Chris and Eddie show at patreon.com slash Christy Comedy, we're going to do, uh, you know, because it's always like some type of substance that we take and well, then do the show. Next week, I'm going to get the booster and then do the show. There's a woman. The booster? A, I'm gonna a, do the. I'm gonna get two boosters in each arm and just do the show. And see what <laughs> that's a good idea. There's a, good idea. There's a woman in, in LA who works with a lot of people, including Tyson. Who you'll, she'll take you away for. It's a four day retreat. Ask if she I wants mean, to buy some tickets to DC. I will. <laughs> I will. I have yeah. friends who did that. I'm, what what they think? I don't know, man. You know. Yeah. I think you're okay. Yeah. What, what, what would you use it for? Just curious. You don't have CTE. You don't have any of that. I'm curious. Shit. You don't have PTSD. Got, you just want to experience yeah. it. PTSD from Just, what though? You saw no war action, you know. Okay, he's been through a I lot. I mean, it, it can help with therapy. I would, but uh, most people that do it see a therapist all the time. Can and you say that therapist and not therapist? Therapist. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, yeah, they, well, it's not. They, they see the therapist, and then if <laughs> that's not working, then because this, yeah, this is yeah. last. Yeah, yeah. We'll talk about 
I mean, you might as well do it. See how you feel. I would say do it. Well, Christian, why are you beat red? What the fuck is going on? Why are you red? <laughs> he's a huge fan, dude. And he's, he, uh, he loves, he's like, Chris uh, did, you, did you take, uh, uh, are you going to claim butyrol or some shit? Mm -mm. Just oh, hot. really? Because I have video proof that you're doing clenbuterol. Jesus, I knew it, man. <laughs> yeah, but, I would love to see it. <clears throat> no, yeah, your brother your brother was shooting up tests in my house last week. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you asked yeah. me to do it to him before. Well, yeah, dude, he's, he, it's terrible. You want to talk about a good-looking kid? Yeah, your brother, man. He got shirt. He actually, he did, I, I did mushrooms with his brother. Oh. He, he took some mushrooms, too. I don't know if, if Stars is upset with that or not. <laughs> um, but we did mushrooms. And then he sat so. on my lap. He sat on my lap on the uh, show. Uh, yeah, go go to Christy Com. Well, yeah, go All to Gianni right. if you want. But what's then if what's you go his to Christy Instagram? Comedy, and show the clip. Look at this kid's body. He's, he's got a rocking up body. Smaller man. Smaller, but he's shredded. Um, well, well, why would he? Why would he sit on your lap? Because we were just we were on mushrooms and we just went Let's fucking go to a, wild. Dude, this is shadow banned? Yeah. Probably. <laughs> he might be shadow banned. Probably. Yeah, Wouldn't there surprise go. me. Right, we'll go, go down. First. Here we go. Go down. That's Shut my father. By the way, this is my father, Tampa Tony. Um, he oh, came to the that. show, Tampa Tony. He made those shirts made up. <laughs> Why does he, he dress a, like that? Well, because those oh, are your uncle, he's, he's, Andrew Dice Clay. He, no, <laughs> I know. That's Tampa Tony. And he took pictures with about 50 women. Whitney Cummings said, Is he single? Um, yeah, dude, he has. His, he had to go zoom out a little bit. Mm -hmm. He wanted to wear his new diabetic socks. I mean, these are new fucking pressure socks. He was wearing. He pulled them up to his nutsack. Yeah, what, <laughs> hey, what, yeah, what, shoe, what, what, what shoes are those? Shoes. No, you, when you look at my father, if you look at it quick, you say, "Does that guy have special needs?" And the answer is, I don't know. <laughs> and, 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 uh, but yeah, so that's that's my pops. But if you go back uh, uh, to to the to the, the go, took mushrooms on my podcast. There we go, right <laughs> there. Yeah, yeah you dude, look dude, high. No, I was high. So Actual silos. I'm gonna give this puppy 20 minutes and we're gonna come back and I'm gonna be on shrooms. <laughs> I just wanna tell you, when I close my eyes, it's going like this. This is G this is Christian's Migration. brother, yeah. and then there, and then the cuts, so he's sitting on my lap. More feminine for some reason. I don't lie. How I'm feeling, you know. <laughs> Look at him. This is like legitimate. Like I feel like I'm upside. I feel like I'm hanging upside down. Like I'm where are the, where are the honestly, mind. man, you know who the you know who our MLK is? MGK machine gun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. I was blacked out. Uh, yeah. People were mad at me about that. Look, see, look at this. Oh, no. right. What a chest. He's never going to be 21 million of them, ever mind. Oh, he's but got a, he's so good I think he's a good looking kid. Yeah. And he's on the juice. Have it, I, I, <laughs> yeah, there's homeless pimple West Coven. Something that there's only made 21 million of. I bought MySpace stock, so I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm oh, hoping good, it comes good. back. Look how your family. Look at that. What the fuck? Why is he sitting on your lap? <laughs> fun. There's my the daughter fuck? bouncing around. There you go. There you go. Why is he on your lap? My. You know what's my? You saw my six-month-old daughter jumping around in that. We call it a jump room. Gianni yeah. started jumping in it after the show. Um, <laughs> that's, uh, that's, cute. that's cute. That's so cute. Yeah, so yeah, so your shit, brother's huh? got a hell of a bot. And the thing is, the thing is, how do you feel about about your brother uh, and his acting career? What do you think? Where do you think it's going to go? You love it. I lo yeah, I love it. I think he's going to be a superstar. Right. So. Is there any jealousy at all? Or you, no. you're happy doing no. what you're doing. You're happy for him. Yeah, I'm completely happy for him. I have no jealousy for that at all. He's, He's been a lot of help for me. You know, yeah. you know what it is? Brother or older? older brother. Older brother. Yeah. I'm the youngest. You're, you're the youngest. Yeah. And you have a lower half like a catcher. You have an ass like a catcher. <laughs> <laughs> no, truthfully, you look like a MLB catcher slash school cafeteria lunch lady ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I do. But that's a positive. Yeah, I got cake. And supposedly it has cake. a piece on it's him. A good Your brother told me you have a big dick. Your brother told me you have a big, big dick. I do. Growing up in Providence, you guys ever do a little math? I'm being honest. Um, <laughs> so, little blow. No, because uh, it, it's it's prevalent in your in your community. No, I, really? we uh, not Providence, Warwick. Yes, it's a huge meth area. Um, no, I didn't do any drugs until or drink really until I graduated. Your pocket. Are you hot? What's going on? <laughs> and he's shaking his butt. Pocket the whole show. I'm you're on it. some sort of supplement. Yeah, I took an Adderall like at oh, seven in the morning. You but you're you, you prescribed Adderall. Yeah. Yes. How yes. many milligrams are we talking? Twenty. Mm -hmm. This morning, yeah. What's the dog tag for? St. Christopher. Uh, oh, St. Christopher. Was the Patriot Saint of Traffic, right? Um, I think I, he is. I think you're wearing the Patriot Saint of Traffic. Maybe. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm uh, pretty sure it's just St. Travels. Yeah. No, I think St. Oh, maybe it's Travels. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tra Sorry. Not traffic. <laughs> hey, Chrissy, fill, fill me in. I don't know. Uh, the. I'll the, fill you up. The, the, thank you, oh, sir. God. The show you do with Sal, Sal did, did okay. they break up? Did the, the crew break yeah, up? Yes. So, so, well, I, the, the Joe Gatto. What's is it, it called? What's the show called? Practical Jokers. Yeah, I guess they oh, broke okay. up. No, they didn't break up. No, they're still doing the show. They're doing. No, they broke up. Now. I'm announcing it now. They broke. They hate each other. You they can't broke spread up. these rumors. No, no, no. They, uh, no. Joe's a great guy. Joe Gatto. Great. They, Joe Gatto's a great guy. They. He, you know, announced publicly he's going through a divorce with his wife, and you know, just couldn't mentally, or I guess, didn't just want to do the show. And um, and uh, so they're going with with just the three of them. And I don't know 
what's going to happen, uh, like what the episodes are going to be like, but I know it's just the three of them. So, And truthfully, because you know me, I'm in a fucking wild mood today. I've had too much coffee. I would spill some beans and just, you know, I don't know anything. Yeah. I truthfully yeah, don't yeah. know. And I wouldn't even ask Sal. Nor do I. It. I. I don't really, I don't yeah, follow the show. I don't care. I, just, I figured they broke up. Yeah. I want to make, I met, I hung with one of them who's a who's really cool. Why don't, they, cool. Why, why don't they slip you in there where this guy can't do both with a divorce? Because I'm in a little thing Cry called a lawsuit. River. Oh yeah, with, Joe. Joe, Joe. You're, in a law, you're in a lawsuit with who? Um, with a with a uh, uh, m uh, media conglomerate, um, uh, because um, I, I didn't want to do a second season of a television show. <laughs> so then you got a little thing called a lawsuit yeah. coming at you, and you just get hit with an email, and then you're like, "That's a big number, can't afford it," and and then <laughs> and then you say, "Hey." Whoa, light bulb just went off. I changed my mind. Can I do a season two? And they say, too late, fucko. You're getting sued. And, this is uh, where your agents should be taking. Where your agents are. Just, yeah. Dude, I've been, yeah. I could. Yeah, bro, I let's jump them. Isn't it nuts? I mean, who are your agents? Just I You fired them. No, nah, I don't, I don't want to be. But I, I, I don't want to get. I don't want to be yet in a third lawsuit. Would you mind calling people that have been around for about 30 years? Like, I would have told you, you can't. They yeah. they lock those contracts. But there's a way to do, but there, but there's also a way sure. to do it and get out. Correct. And not getting sued. You get you you suffer from exhaustion, anxiety. No, or there tour, are ways to do it's that. running. There's yeah. so many ways to yeah, do well, it. Yeah, well the problem is is I yelled on my podcast, it's not enough money for me, motherfucker. Like yeah. I was yelling things like that, and they they're citing some of the things I've said on the podcast. Of course they are. Yes, yeah, such yeah. as well, I you're high this on bullshit shrooms. fucking show. I make more money on my couch, bitch. Okay. And then yelling at the producers. Now, what, so that yeah. was a little wild. What was the show? <sighs> well, the thing is, I was told the by board. the lawyer not to mention it, uh, and uh, well, let's not. So let's, let's not, not. But off the air, I'll tell you, okay. it's just a show about construction. <laughs> and, 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 and he was he would fill in and do King of Sing while filming out here. Yeah, you have to rush yeah. back yeah. to there. Yeah, so so eight who's the, who's the network? No, I, you I can't tell any of that. I can't say anything. But I'm trying to get you in trouble. Don't no, I can't. I don't want to get any more sued than I actually am. Um, no, but the he truth told us it all before. Though. I was yelling. I know, I know but, but, but the truth is, I was joking. No, the truth is, is is I I you know it really was like my my girl. You know, I have a six six month old daughter. Yeah. So you know, I thought if things could be in New York. I would do them in New York, no problem. But to, to, to leave for months on end with a six-month-old daughter with, we bought a house, my girl doesn't drive. Like, I was like, this is actually, I cannot do this. Yeah. Like, and so, so it's genuine, like a truthfully, like a real family Where was the show issue. Shot? Here. It, it was okay. originally in LA, but my family was here. My yeah. girl was- my, You got an Airbnb. Jasmine was pregnant. Family was out here. That's why yeah. he's on King. Once she had the baby, the though, we thought, we thought they were going to do it in New York and I could be home and then, but it, I can't leave for three, four months with a six. I just can't yeah. do mm -hmm. it. So that's really truthfully the reason, but you know, they, I was told not to talk about it and not even mention it up <laughs> even the slightest. But I say, what's what are you? Am I going to sell less tickets? I can't. There you go. Yeah, there you, go. you, yeah, you can't get it. You're not going to get any worse than seven percent of the room. In today's, in today's <laughs> world, you can turn anything into chaos, into sales, right? Yeah, you chaos. You can turn anything into ticket sales. Right? Anything, dude. That's what I do with that daytime shit. Like you know, I'm like, because because I remember I did the Wendy Williams one and one of the. Uh, people I was on the show with because Whitney Cummings was hosting Wendy Williams and I mean I was like laying bombs out there like fucking bombs and 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 the crowd was like what I mean you know the makeup people were like just get out of here because I mean <laughs> they were jokes like I was doing fucking bits yeah you know and it's not your crowd yeah you know, I was doing jokes and they were like you know you have to take things seriously and everybody gets like applause breaks over there for saying bullshit fluff I was like I'm I'm trying to do fucking jokes here like yeah. about what a nightmare it, you know it must be for travis barker dating whatever kardashian he's like just then they're talking about how nice and fun it is i'm like ugh, get out of here you know so so i was just trying to do comedy and then one of the panelists on the show because it was bad she she called me after and she was like you know i've been there before like this sob story about bombing i was like lady i'm gonna take these clips and they're going to get hundreds of thousands of views, and I'm going to sell out the beacon. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you talking? You're That's lost. The hustle, dude. Yeah, going yeah. for because then you know her tickets were. You know she can't sell a 300 seater, and yeah. I'm like. You what you you're lost with entertainment. Like yep. if you're gonna take that shit seriously, that's it's not fine. Real. It's not Nobody's real. buying tickets no. to a comedy show. No. Uh, you have to do comedy all the time. Yes. Even if it's uncomfortable. Yep. Yeah. So so I'm like, that's what I'm I'm never gonna fucking sell out and be like, oh, let me just because I'm on this show and they're setting, let me just hear what they want. I was like, no, I'm gonna do the fucking jokes. I'm gonna yell, I have warts. And it's like if it bombs, it like, bombs. Like have you ever seen when Bobby Lee or Segur or Mark Norman did like the, the, oh, the, the, the best. It's the best. Yeah. It, and at the time, like I'm sure anybody watching the, the, especially the news anchors were like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, it has. Because I don't know bullshit. how many millions of views yeah. of just so many views. us laughing our asses yeah, off at it. Girls are funny. 
Bobby's is great too. Yeah, man. dude. You want to talk about ticket sales? Tom Segura. I don't. Oh. I, it's weird to me. People don't. You know, he has residency in New in Las Vegas. Oh, does he? I was there playing, and uh, he's like, "Dude, you're in Vegas." I'm like, "Yeah, where are you?" At? He's like, "I'm at Mandalay." I'm like, "Oh, I'm at Wise Guys." He's like, yeah, "I'm here every month. I have a residency." I'm like, "Okay." There you go. People don't realize. But what Tom did is besides yeah. besides yeah. Rogan, he's he's what he's he the did is what the thing I think we all are doing and continue to do is put your hand, put your career in the hands of your fans, and then you're safe. Yep. that's what Tom did. Yeah, hands of the fans. Don't give a fuck about all this other bullshit. And it, listen, if it comes, it comes. But it's like I care about my fans and my fans only. That's what, yeah. that's what I'm doing this for. I don't care about all this other bullshit. You know, you don't need. Every, I make everything a part of the show. I've tried to be like everything on the Chrissy Chaos podcast is a part of the show. Whatever happens, we bring it in and we talk about it because I don't know. It's real life. I don't want anything to be like staged or manicured or f I don't feel like we don't live in a. F now, like, everything's been exposed. Yeah. So now I'm like, let's Every, just be everything real is, then. Everything, yeah. Not only has everything been exposed, but it's being more and more exposed. That pretty yeah. soon, there are no secrets anymore. No. Even celebrity. Like, the whole idea when I was coming up, celebrity was like, you saw De Niro in... In a real situation like a for unicorn. five minutes. Like seen a unicorn. Right, for five yeah. minutes, once a year. You had on no idea Conan. how he dressed, looked. Right. You had no idea about his political beliefs. Nothing. How he feels about vaccinations. Right, now. He's a mystery. Now we're like, you're oh, everything. you're a fucking regular dude who happens yeah. to make believe for it a takes living. takes the fourth wall down. Yeah, That's no what idea. this whole podcast is. And now is it's like, about. I'm not going for generally famous or i appeal to everyone no you got to go you niche can't, you won't as make big it. as your niche you know try to get your niche as big as possible but it's like i almost love that i can in certain markets sell tickets but also remain remain pretty much anonymous because it's like some of my peers you know some of you know some of my peers who are really like old school television famous they hate their they can't walk down the street they can't do anything yeah, and i'm like yeah. i can still sell tickets and give my family the life that i, I want to give them yep. but also remain you know pretty much keep like my anonymity yeah, which, TMZ's I, which is a beautiful thing around yeah, they don't agree. give a fuck i'm yeah, not yeah, i'm not important yeah. enough but i'm still going i'm still going ready for this i'm still going if it's two thousand miles or less i'm going first three thousand miles economy uh uh, uh um uh Future. extra leg room so yeah. you know what i mean you know why so it's just six inches i'm in that zone leg room mm -hmm. for europe i'm going economy months. middle <laughs> Europe, what can you do? Europe, I gotta go business. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I'm saying where I'm at financially. No, I yeah. understand. Yeah. I understand. Yeah, no. Listen, you know, yeah. I got a BMW 2012, but BMW. Well, first oh. class ticket, by the way, to Europe will cost you 10 grand a lot of times. Yeah. Now, if you want to spend 10 grand for five hours, six hours, or or maybe 11 hours. Yeah. All right. I mean, yeah. sometimes, or you can spend a grand for like you know, yeah, comfortable comfortable what economy premium business? economy premium it's hard to spend an extra nine grand for that i feel like i'm that getting first class, what we do yeah. we do economy premium ready for this here's another chris and eddie idea going to london economy middle seat we're going to do a glass of wine and an ambient that's the show patreon.com slash christy comedy <laughs> fucking light it up there it is, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so basically, basically you're gonna be a drug addict by the end of the well, year my family has actually had an intervention with me and said you know we know you're doing the chris and eddie show and you're having fun once a week you take some type of substance an edible a mushroom a you know and you drink a 40 which is fun it's great but you know you're not like this you've never really done substance or drank anything before so we were a little concerned about you, you. more ice and whiskey and i said i said listen mom you're not my mother anymore <laughs> the patreon is i said that's who i fucking that's, that's my lord and Phil. savior yeah, is i said patreon. my lord and savior is patreon.com so back off back up and bitch. Back off. she said uh she said yeah no you're having um you know you, you need to you need to slow it down I, I think i think you're uh i think you're pushing things down i said well you know what mom you're right and uh <laughs> I, said, I said you know you're what, mom you're right i said mom you're right nobody knows me better than you i mean i came out of your body and uh yeah it's actually what i like to call a cry for help so you, what i'm doing so you've only done you've only done edibles mushrooms and then 40s and then 40s and then uh we smoked a little weed um, a little weed. smoked a little weed once and then um um we are gonna do uh method what, meth no not method nothing like that We're you know how big of a show you'd have if you tried meth i'm gonna, gonna do four, i'm gonna drink a but four you loco you don't you don't need to do meth don't do meth no 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 four locos are you gonna do acid four locos like but not the pussy four loco like, no i'm gonna get, drink like have, a have your boys get the original four loco that killed i don't people. think they have that <laughs> you can find <laughs> it on the four dark locos what a 40 ounce no, no, it's a it's special like drink. People die from it. You can still get the original liquor, one, though. Like That's what we'll do. Extreme drink. Have them search the dark I do that on the $5 tier. There you go. Original four logo. But you're not a drinker, really. Yeah, it was the caffeine not content. No, honestly, sometimes sometimes on the Patreon, we don't do Chris and Eddie show. But once in a while, when I'm going to... Wow. Sometimes I just... To be honest with you, I like taking an edible once shit. in a while. I've gone to an age where it's like, sometimes you just need to calm down. 
yeah. you know? Because now I understand 500 the milligrams of caffeine in the originals. Right. They, people how many coffees is that? Uh, so how many milligrams in a coffee Five. is it? Is One, it, it says 156 for 150 it. milligrams in a tall, small coffee. Okay. 160 for Starbucks, yeah. So what are we doing? So 500, we're doing about what, three coffees? Chin, yeah, ha- hey, how much caffeine's in uh, eight shots of espresso? That's what I drink every morning. Uh, every morning I drink. Shots, so you could probably handle that five, 500 about milligrams. That would do nothing for me. Look yeah. like a dumper on no, Christmas. I said, no, I take eight <laughs> shots of espresso. You got a hell of an ass, yeah, dude. I think it's, uh, you do. 64. So shaped like a so you know 64 times like? eight is what you know what you look like a little bit a bowling pin. Not bad. That's fair. <laughs> you know what I mean? But Shoot. but a sexy bowling. Six hundred. Probably six hundred. Yeah. That's, that's, like a, that's a fair coffee, statement. Right? Not the end of the world, dude. You know what? Have a little four loco. 512. You know? 512. 512. Yeah. Are terrible. you a uh, you eight coffee shot? guy? There's a lot of student loans out there, man, and people are sick loans. of it. You got to get rid of your student loans or at least learn how to refinance this. You can save thousands with refinancing if you know where to look. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you where to look. I'm going to stop you right there. Where. Go to Earnest.com. Earnest was voted best student loan refinancing overall by Nerd Wallet. okay? Yep. Earnest has some of the lowest rates, flexible payments, an in-house team ready to help you and with, out. With Earnest, you could change your interest rate, get a lower monthly payment. You never pay fees, not even late fees. By refinancing, you can reduce your loan term, save money, or combine multiple loans in a simple monthly payment. If you have questions, you can talk to a real human a at real Earnest. real human? Not yes, a machine? An actual human That's being, amazing. Brian. With Earnest, it only takes two minutes to see what your new rate could look like, all right? And it doesn't impact your credit. Right now, Earnest is offering the Fire and Kid listeners and viewers a $100 cash bonus Refinance your student debt at earnest.com slash fighter. Not available in all states. Once again, you can get a hundred bucks when you visit earnest.com slash fighter to refinance your student loan. Hit them with that thing. I don't want to visit earnest.com slash fighter for more details. Not available in all states. Terms and conditions apply. Earnest student loan refinancing made by Earnest Operations LLC and MLS number 120-4917. California refinancing letter number 605-478888. Five three five Mission Street, San Francisco, California nine four one zero five. Visit earnest dot com slash licenses for full list of licenses. Five twelve, five twelve. Yeah. Are you uh, so you coffee shots, guy? Big coffee guy. Me too. I go. Through, this is my third iced coffee of the day. I don't do tea. I should do tea. Yeah. But I don't do tea. But I like I like a little coffee. You don't much care about what kind of coffee as long as it's coffee because I'm a coffee. I go iced coffee black. And I was told I did, did Cincinnati. I I was in Cincinnati for New Year's Eve Taft Theater. Missed a sell up by about that was truthfully two hundred. Okay. I missed that one by 200, but I was with Sal Volcano, so, you know. Sure. Um, so so um, I was there, New Year's Eve, and I went into a store, and I said, hey, can I get a, can I get a black iced coffee? And the, you know, the, the person behind the counter was like, excuse me? The barista? Uh, the barista, and I said, can I get a black iced coffee? What? And they were like, don't you want to change that tone a little bit? I swear what? to God. And I said, no. What? Was Cincinnati no, was, or Seattle? Cincinnati. Oh, Weird. And I was with what Jasmine, who's, who's Puerto Rican, and I said, um... I said, I looked at her. I was like, what am I doing? And she said to him, she goes, do you want him to, are you like, I have a problem because he's saying black iced coffee? She was like, and the guy was like, yeah, I just think it's like a, a, in 2021. Like, no, no, no he didn't. Like, it, it's a coffee with no milk. And I was like, and then it was a white guy. And I was like, what? I was like, I would have punched him in the, no, no. Yeah. That's what you want to, I mean, I wouldn't have, but that's where you want to just. Well, we're, we're, we're in Seattle. Remember I went yeah. to that hipster type store and I go. You, you know, especially like the capital, you know, the what, the capital street. What's it called? Like I can't in Seattle, remember. it's like the, where you know the main cities. area where yeah. like the gay area is at. Uh, so there's where, like no, tra- I'll Google it. Though. There's like trans people walking around. Whatever. <laughs> I go in a coffee shop, and the the barista or whatever made coffee look like me, but had long hair, black fingernails. I didn't think anything of it. Yeah. Makes me the drink. Nothing wrong. I go, hey bro, will you hand me a straw, and he turns around and goes, bro. And I go, what? And he goes, bro. You mean miss? I go, dude. If you don't give me a fucking straw, I swear to God. And he gave me a straw. Did you get? Did you say oh, that? Me a straw. I was like, dude, I swear to I'm not playing this shit, dude. Give me the fucking straw, man. He gave me the straw. I walked out. I'm like, dude, you believe that shit? Well, like, it was, it was right. It, but, uh, the, but, but also, like on the name tag, it said like Bill. It said like Dave or like a very it's, manly this name. Isn't ego and there's no pro. This like, is narcissism. If, if on the name tag, if, it, if, if he had a dress on the name tag said whatever pronouns are her, whatever she, then I'd be like, hey, uh, whatever. You could, could she hand me a straw? I, I wouldn't disrespect him. It's just narcissism. I was like, hey, bro, can you hand me a straw? It looked like yeah. bigger beard than, like beard down yeah, to see, here. So, so, so if we're going to really go with the truth is whatever you say it is. Then there's no truth. We can't there's, get offended if there's, there's also, especially if you didn't know. It's logically, it's logically no, like, impossible. Yeah, I'll, I'll obey the the pronouns on their name tag. You know what I'm saying? But but it's I'll logically, obey that. Yeah, it's logically impossible to fucking um 
but to, how would you know? Society. How would so you know? I met this coffee guy over here in this this milk milk cross, and I said, uh, I love I love how his hair is, uh, you know, I, I love the way his hair is. He had this long hair, yeah, gay. and he said mm. her, and I went, okay, you see, now that means I'm old. And she she looked at me and she goes, it was a guy who transitioned, and he said, you're totally fine, you're doing you're doing great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just a new thing, and it was like I appreciated that. She yeah, was taking yeah, care you appreciated of me. That. Yeah, because she because this is an intelligent yeah, person way to do it. who realizes that this is fifteen seconds old. It's fifteen minutes old. This yeah. whole transgender thing. Yeah, it's fifteen minutes old. And, and I don't have any issue. Now, did that turn you I'm, on a little bit? Huh? <laughs> did it turn you on a little bit? Can, can I be honest? I have Truth zero issue with can it. Can I be honest? Yeah. A little bit. Like <laughs> yeah. I mean, look. Here's yeah. the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Yeah. I'm a straight Chrissy. I'm a straight guy. I know. I'm a straight man, right? You're, yes. Till, till midnight that, hits. Right? Till well, midnight hits. No, no. Now listen. I have deep feelings of kinship for friends. Yeah. You know, he and I love my I love my boy right here. No matter what, he knows this. Dude, I sent him a video of me getting I'm having this procedure done on my leg to fix my hamstring. I sent it. He sends me a video back. It shows the football game. I'm like, yeah, great game. He was great. And he's just rubbing his dick through his sweat. He needs to see what I'm working with. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. But I see, and but he also I needs it. to know, he also yeah, needs to know what time it is. I know, though. I know yeah. what time But you need to know. But you forget sometimes what time it is. So I, I remind my friends. Now, now, here's yeah. the thing. Here's it's the a thing. lot. Listen, it's right? Sunday afternoon. It is a lot. And it is a lot. And it's probably pushing it a little. You're with your family. You don't need that. <laughs> Now, here's the thing, though. I do. There are times, and here, here's what I have to say about all of this. <laughs> yeah. I, I told you that I spent time with Tom Cruise. I, I had one-on-one conversation with him for an hour and a half at a party, and we were really talking. And not only that, I had done a reading with him. No, I'm telling you. I had done a reading with him where like six people in the room, and we had all our scenes together for a script called The Men That Never Went. So I felt, we talked about wrestling, Dan Gable's wrestling cam. I felt like I had a, a friendship. And and th- the best part was he goes, you were great in that reading. Tell me, thank you. I've told the story before. Thank you. You were no, you were great oh, in that man, reading. Thank you. I appreciate your timing it. was. You were great in well, that I'm reading. Coming from you, man, means a lot. Uh, he said that thirteen times. Now wait. Yeah. So I'm talking to him, and we're talking about it. we had our kids the same age, and I I went I, I remember thinking to myself, and Orlando Bloom was there too, and he said hi. He was very nice to me, and I said. Mm-hmm. I would, if nobody's looking you and Tom Cruise out. wanted to make out with me, I don't know how I would say no. I'd be very, it, I, yeah. what would I say? You would do it? I was so starstruck man. that I would do that. But now, now that's, Game no, man. that's peer pressure. That's peer it's pressure because no I want to be liked. It's your no own pressure. I want to be liked. The, look, the look's pressure. There's no though. pressure. Nobody's no, no. looking though. I get it. I get it. It's the look. Nobody's looking and it helps my career. Right. Now, when I see a, a lady, Just sign up for I see a man who's a lady like, like and you know, you and I know that, that one coffee gal who used to be a guy. Remember in the old studio? Breathtaking. Right. <laughs> Gorgeous girl. Thank you. Now, it's a man, though. Now, oh, the, now, say it again. A, Bra- a, Bra- a Brazilian man in a dress. Now, breathtaking. breathtaking. Now, if you don't think. <laughs> There's something about her. You get There's something about her. <laughs> Look, I'm not attracted, but I can be broken. I can. <laughs> If, if there's <laughs> nothing else around, if there's nothing else around, and I'm drinking, maybe I'm a little tutored up, you never know, I can be broken. Yeah, if right. you brought her on Chrissy Chaos and I did shrooms with you, yeah. like, dude, kiss her. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, listen, I'm like, I. <laughs> and that, but that's, to me, that might be because she's very feminine, though. Right. So I think I've said this many times on, on podcasts before, but the way I describe myself, and it seems like you're in this category, is I fall in love with men. I have sex with women. That's where I'm at. <laughs> By the way. So emotionally, I'm more connected to it's, men, yeah. but yes. I will have sex yeah. with a woman. Yes. I mean, you know, so you're like, bi. Yes. No, because I've never knowingly yeah. had sex with a man. <laughs> um, my joke is this. What happens when you're unconscious? You're unconscious. Yeah. This is wild. Here's my, here's my joke. Here's my joke. It's not even a joke. I've seen men, you and I, when we were on it, when we saw that, that black dude who was a running back, I think, for the Giants, where his, he had his shirt off, and I went, there's one I go, if one more person asked me if I'm a pro athlete, I'm going to bust. Yeah, I started laughing. Saquon you, Barkley? Was it Saquon? No, it wasn't. But, it was but, that's a good you're example. you a little horny off those thighs. I don't know what so you're doing. the hams? Oh, dude, bro. So here's how he I saw him on a flight, yeah. and he goes, God, that guy's bigger. You don't know who that is? Yeah. Saquon. So I go, his yeah, thighs. I go, he's the best running back in the NFL yeah. when he's healthy. And then where's that he's, little loop earring? He's, he's a giant pussy now, but dude, when he's healthy, yeah, the best. But a guy like that, you, all of us have seen a man. With a shirt off or mm-hmm. just in a pair of shorts, who's so breathtaking yeah. that you don't want to have sex with them, but if you had to rub them down in oil, you yes. would oppose it. You it'd be it'd be kind of a, a field day for your hands. Like you'd be like, this is 
These are goals. You'd be I'm excited in. about it. Yeah, it'd be like, yeah. Ee, whoa, yeah. look at this. Just because it's uh, you're, you're you're looking forward to it. Well, all his you'd say to yourself, look at all his bits and pieces. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. are you? But I are, saw a guy in Manhattan Beach yesterday. He was wearing those tight shorts. He had nice big thighs, and yeah. I said, I want to sniff his butt a little bit. <laughs> well, that's pushing. That's it. fine yeah. too. Yeah. No, but, but, but not gay. My question for you be would while you rub him down, are you? Do you have an erection? Because then you'd be a gay man. No, no, I don't have an erection. You have an appreciation for it. I go like it's like nice cars. This is the best I say. All I do is I go like because you don't know cars. You you treat you. Treating a man like a car? I go like this. I go. I go. Yes. I go. I go. You're back. I go. You got a lot of. You got. This is the best I tell. I go. You got a lot of nooks and crannies. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. not gay. That's just an appreciation. <laughs> yeah. You got a lot of I, nooks and crannies. I appre- I'm comfortable with who I am because uh-huh. uh, there's a character on my podcast, Chrissy Chaos Podcast, TT Jerry, who's transgendered. Uh, uh, my it's Jasmine, my girlfriend's yes. um, uh, godfather, she's transgender. She's a transgender person, uh, did 20 years in prison. Love T.T. Uh, Jerry. Love T.T. Jerry. She, so was, you guys in, know, she was in for 20 years. 20 years. Wow. Right Blue there. the son of Sam and everything. Now, T.T. Jerry, see, here you go. Now, when T- see, she's wearing that dress and all that. Like, T.T., you know, she doesn't look too different from the mother of my children. Now, if the lights are off, <laughs> we've had a few cups of... You know what I mean? Yeah. Your girls was so much hotter. <laughs> I was that, how no, I dare you? I see your girl a couple of so much hotter. Dude, I'm how saying, dare you? Yeah. Well, I, how dare they're you? They're be- I will say they're both beautiful. And 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 just the thing is, it's like, is like, oh, I didn't realize Jesse Reyes commented. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, hello. Yeah. Who's that? Um, yeah. Singer. Well, she's a big one. Jeez. Yes, sir. Jesus. Oh, so, hey, if wow. she has a cock, I'm in. Jeez. Um so so I, yep, yep, we can get off this because <laughs> right. Jasmine's probably watching. All right, here we go. Um, so, so, um, yep, wow, that, yeah. Wait, <laughs> so, so she's. Uh, <laughs> your, 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 girl gets, your girl just gets jealous. <laughs> oh yeah, Latin. Oh, yeah, for real. Latin. Oh, oh yeah, Latin. Latin. God. Oh, you, know. you can't do anything. You don't Latin. fuck around. That, that's that's when you have a Latin lady. Saddle. You can't do anything. She'll set my cards on. But with Titi, yeah. with Titi, um, by the way, Titi, hilarious. Titi was talking about life and death. The other night with us, with me, my kids went to sleep. It was me, Jazz, and TT, and she was just saying like, the thing is with a person like TT Jerry. What's so beautiful about her as as a human being is she was incarcerated for twenty four years. For what? I think she went to jail. You know, it was a grand larceny, theft, this that. But then she, kept, what happened was, is in prison. She kept getting more. Why does she have the five o'clock shadow there? Sometimes she, you know, sometimes she, fuck she, it. She, she's fucking, she straddles both worlds sometimes, yeah. you know? Like the other day she went to go pick up my stepson. She was wearing one of my sweatshirts and Jasmine's high heel shoes. Right. And they wouldn't give her my stepson, rightfully so. So we have to call the school yeah. and be like, she's fine. That's your sister's uh, uncle. This is I mean, my girl. Sorry, your that's girlfriend's girl. uncle. I'm that's sorry. her godfather. Yeah, yeah. Oh, godfather. That's her godfather. Yeah, yeah. So right there. And, uh, and now godmother, but she's a beautiful person. And she said, I spend so much time you know, in, incarcerated for different crimes because she kept getting put, getting added more prison time when uh, she would do things in prison to get like, for example, a guy kept coming to her cell and putting his penis, his flaccid penis over into her cell. And she was like, I don't like this. Like, this is stop doing this. Yeah. And then one day he put his penis over the cell and she cut it off or cut a tip oh, of it off with shit. a tuna can. Ooh. Oh, so, Jesus. yeah. Okay. So that, so tuna you can's going to hurt. So you, oh, tuna can. So you get oh, solitary. Tuna can's going to hurt. Oh, oh, oh. You get solitary for that. Yeah. No. Then we had another instance where a security yeah. guard, uh, he said was, you know, really like assaulting her and being, uh, uh, you know, really not nice to her and all this stuff. So what she did was she took a couple of days worth of shit and piss. She put it in a Folgers scan and she shook it up and she threw it in his face. Yeah. Another two in solitary yeah, for that. Huh? That's a tough one. Yeah. So, that's so she, so, so Jesus, then Jesus Christ. Yeah. So way. you keep getting, I'd, I think I'd rather have my dick cut than have prison fights shit and all. All that two days, pissed, two days old. She just kept letting fester. The Folgers can't. So, so does she have a man in prison? So here's the interesting part. One of her on and off again boyfriends. I put this on the podcast with the son of Sam. They were in the same prison together. She was yes, in the pr- same David Berkowitz. Son. David Berkowitz. She hung out with him. On, it was her on and off prison boyfriend. And then we had a guy. <laughs> Shut up. No, well, because at first it's, it's hard for us to you know verify things. But then she told us the I prison she it. was in. He was in that prison, and then we had somebody because certain inmates get privileges of social media. Yeah. So there was a guy, a murderer in there, a, a Cheech or something like that. Doesn't I forgot. Sure, they, they messaged the homeless pimp. He messaged. He listened to the podcast, and he messaged the homeless pimp's uh, Instagram saying, "That is, I can verify that Holy they, they were on and off again." And son of Sam she was upset when he got transferred. Son of prison. Sam. Then also Amityville Horror House murder. Um, mm-hmm. Ronald DeFeo. He said that. She said that he, they were sell like shared a wall, and what she would do is put on like little skimpy outfits, you know, like cut her pants up and make like little thongs, and he, she would uh, let him uh, hold a mirror out, and she would shake her ass up, and he would jerk off to that. That was, you know, it's like I want. I want and oh, she, she said, likes bad boys. Well, she told me. Yeah. She, I said, who was crazier, son of Sam or or DeFeo? She goes, 
DeFeo by a landslide. I said, really? She said to me, this was so two I'm years ago. do all the murders, but yeah. But she, no, but she said that before the Netflix documentary came out. I didn't, like, yeah. She goes, he didn't do all those murders. No. And we were like, whoa. But then she said DeFeo, she said DeFeo was a true nut. He's Amityville Horror House. If you, They made a movie about it. He killed his entire family and said the house told him to do it. Oh, every nice. day, she said he passed away recently, but every day you would talk to him. She would bring him his coffee. She would like go get his meals from him. She was like his like little like prison girlfriend, like prison wife. She said, um, every day I'd talk to him and, you know, it'd be the same thing. Hey, Ronald, how you doing? He'd be like, hey, how you doing, Jerry? I just wish I killed my grandma. Like that, like it, he, he, every day oh, he would say, yeah. I just wish I killed my grandma. Yeah. Like, like complete. Obsessed. Nut, with, yeah. Nut. yeah, dude. No, she played basketball with Tupac, right? Two months before he died. He was in, he was in Rikers Island. Uh -huh. yep. Then he got killed. She was playing basketball with Did him. She, she was him? in Rikers Island. She said he was, she said he was mad, cool. Everybody loved Tupac. Of course. She was like, I don't think that everybody loved him. Even the everybody was happy. So she that, was in Rikers for a while too. That's she was tough. in Rikers for a little bit. Yeah. She was in Rikers when Lil Wayne was in there. Dude, All I these can't things. believe she sucked off Son of Sam. Sucked us many times. That. Yeah, and she said everybody in prison loves Trump. She was like, they were going, the inmates were going for Trump big wow. time. She said all of them, black, white, Asian, didn't Why? matter, gay, Why? straight. Really? She Why? said because they said Trump, what they felt was they said Trump. He was real. They said he was real. Now, whether that's true or not, they that's what they believed at that time. They were like, he's fucking real. They were like, everybody else is fake and bullshit. Jerry was like, as an inmate, you know, you, we, we feel like we're from the streets and whatever, and you, we, we felt like Trump was saying how it was, and that's why people were getting mm, mad. Well, too bad they can't vote. So. Too bad they cannot vote, which I think is bullshit. They should be able to vote yeah. when you got out of prison. But it's, she's fascinating because she told me, when she was talking to us, she was like, you know, I, I'd be so happy because the way my life started was beautiful, and if I die tomorrow, the way my life end, is ending is beautiful. She was like, because of you guys and the podcast and all you've God done, and we were like man. getting like yeah. emotional. I was like, yeah. oh my god, that's so beautiful. And she was like, don't don't cry for me, Chris. She goes, I'm gonna still be sucking dick in heaven. Is she ill? Is she? Ill? She's not ill, but I think she just feels like. Um, yeah. I don't know. I think she just is like, yeah. hey, if something ever happened to me, I am just want you to know I'm happy. I don't know why. She, she just brought it up out of nowhere. Well, but, it's hard. Right? Yeah, she's 57 years life. old. I mean, I mean, it's, I mean yeah, you want to talk about, about it. I mean, come on. Years. Pull, pull up that picture with the thigh right there. I mean, what are we doing here, babe? This I one? Mean, you know? No, the You don't athlete. like a little something like that? Yeah. Go down a little bit. Go, oh, go Click out of that one. Yeah, I mean, come on. Yeah. What are we doing with the purple dress? Is she on hormones? And she was on hormones. Yeah. She was on hormones, but then when she got out of prison, they stopped with the hormones. But that's why, and we say it every week at, at Patreon, patreon.com says 50 comedy. <laughs> a portion of the patron goes to continuing her estrogen therapy. So we've been pumping her, um. we've been getting her estrogen back, and we use some of the money from the from the from the patron. So thanks. This was in my apartment. The children were sleeping in the next room. And uh, you know, just get a little dick shake for the camera. Yep. And uh, she's tucked back oh, did, there. She still she, has the the dick. Well, yeah. I mean, it, right here it looks like a vagina, but what she does, she tucks it back and then tapes it back, and it and it makes a pussy. That's a uh, that's a person who truly feels like a woman. Mm -hmm. No, you want to talk about and what, what I love about her is she is because of the life she's lived, the minuscule bullshit problems that we have. She's like, not worried about. Even it. when me and my girl were having issues, she's like, "You two are putting yourself in prison." Voluntarily, oh boy, yeah. she's uh, like, get uh, the fuck out of yeah. you're putting yourself in a mental prison. She's like, I was in actual prison, solitary yeah. confinement. She's like, get stop putting yourself in prison. If you, if if it's gonna work, then make it work. If it's not gonna work, then go on with your life. You, I like yeah. this one when she looks like Chris Jenner. That's a good. That's a good person. <laughs> that's a good person to have yeah. around, dude. She's you know what it is she because she, she represents the truth. She's, she yeah. wrote, oh someone wrote Chris Jenner. <laughs> oh, it ain't they? easy. Yeah. I mean, it's I, not an easy life. No, that's a tough guy. Dude, when she, dude, she solitary two times in her life, solitary confinement for two years. Yeah. Only the Holy light of day. Fuck. First meal, 5 30 a.m. If you're sleeping, you miss it. Second meal, 11 a.m. If you're sleeping, you miss it. Last meal of the day, 3 p.m. You have to eat it then. If you, you cannot, they come in an hour after each meal and search for contraband. You can't hide bread or anything. So TT said, she was like, what I would have to do is, she's like, I would have to put food up my ass and then shit it out, clean it off and eat it. She was like, I, I had to live this way. She was like, so this is what, she's like, so I, but I was really in solitary confinement. She said, there were many times where, you know, I, I would get angry, yell at a, a prison guard. They don't, you don't see anybody for two days. You don't eat for two days. I bet mentally she's strong as fuck. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's yeah. what I'm saying. When you talk to her, you realize like your problems are fucking bullshit. It's yeah. like, you know, because you she, complained to her about your theater ticket sales? Yeah. She, <laughs> and she was like, she said the same thing. She's like, she was like, she was like, you know what's crazy too? Is because I was like debating. I had John A. Light on my podcast. John A. Light. Who's that? 
So yes. this that's funny. a good question, isn't it? John A. Light. That's a he good was question. John Gotti's henchman. He killed. So they say though. Killed. Well, because a lot of people like Sammy the Bull say I never heard of the guy. Well, but a but I mean, there's pictures with a light and Gotti and all that. Like it's all very. He mm -hmm. he would really did do time in prison. Killed six people with a baseball bat. He's no joke, man. Killed six different people. His weapon of choice was baseball bat. Pictures of him with Gotti. And you had him on the pod. John so he's a out of prison now. John a light. So a he did time in jail oh, and geez. and you know convicted murderer. And he ratted, uh, you know, he opened about it, you know, cooperated to, to get less prison time. He snitched. This so, guy. Yeah, so John A. Light. He's a dangerous dude. So John A. Light, he goes, um, he goes uh, that was Gotti's son. So John A. Light, um, he came uh, and did the podcast in the house. And, you know, Jasmine was like, why you would have convicted murderers in the house? I said, it's for the, I said, it's for the YouTube. <laughs> and, <laughs> she goes, and so, but anyway, T.T. Jerry and John Aylett were on the episode together, and they were both swapping prison stories. And this is the only time. Was it great? On my pod yes. The only time on my podcast where I had to, I had to. Listen. Delete. No, no, I had to delete stuff. Because normally we say, we, we don't edit. We just go in and we roll. Why'd you edit? Huh? Why'd you edit? Because... They started sharing stories together of who they knew in prison, and it came to light that T.T. Jerry had sucked a couple of these Italian gangsters' dicks. And oh, had you don't want that heat. No, when Eli told me after the party, he goes, hey, you know, it's your life, your, whatever you want to do. He goes, I'm just telling you, if, if any of these guys, even though we didn't say their names, get described and they can figure out who's who, you will get killed for that. He goes, you're going to get killed for that. Oof. And I was like, and I was like, holy shit. Edit, hard but, Jer but then, because Jerry was going off, she was like, yeah. And they were like, oh, I know that guy and this and that. But, you know, because she was like, she's, first of all, what Jerry told me, she goes, she goes, everybody comes into prison and says they ain't gay. And after six months, you gay. That's what she said. She goes, <laughs> Everybody's gay. She goes, you got about six months and then you gay. I, I give Callan two days. That. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, she's got a. Two I mean, days, Brian. Yeah. Like, Fuck two days. Well, she told me. She told me in 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 jail. She was like, "Look," because I asked her. I said, "If I went to prison, what 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 would be your advice?" She goes, "I would say you were trans immediately." She goes, "I would start asking for estrogen pills immediately because then they're going to move you to the transgender part of the jail, which is a lot safer. They're probably not going to hurt you, and you just take a little estrogen for a couple of years." She was like, "Maybe you'll like it, you're and then you get tit. out of prison." You're gonna grow yeah, tit. but I'm yeah. throwing them anyway. I'm eating muffins every morning. Yeah. So what's the difference? Yeah. And so maybe it curb my appetite. So that's what her genuine, honest advice was. And you know. It, 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 the things about like listening to someone like that just talk about prison and what it's like and her life is like the most minuscule thing she's happy about like you know when we say like you try to tell your kids oh there's kids who don't even have food but yeah. they're like i don't know what you're talking about they have no yeah, yeah, yeah. she genuinely is like i am happy to be breathing fresh air i'm happy that i walk to the street corner and you know I no used to eat hot dogs out of my ass yeah dude she used to do that all the time she would hide she would hide the hot dog what, what she did she actually told a great story is she would get the um they used to her last name is miranda they would call her j-lo in prison but they said well. that the security guards everybody well. calls her j-lo in prison okay they, the security guards would have to get every time they would give breakfast sausages they caught on they couldn't give the breakfast sausages because they were sausage links to Jerry, because what she would do was she was upstate prison uh, around the Buffalo area, Attica prison. So she would oh, go fuck. up there. She would she, she had a little shelf at the top of her um, cell and her window could open a little bit. She would open up the window, stick the uh, sausage links up there. They would freeze. Now they're dildos. So she would she would you know you know she would uh, you know get the dildos up her ass yeah. and you know the sausage up her ass and she would you know she, you know uh, uh, make everybody come with the dildos and you know you can't do that even though it's fun sure so even though it's fun. what a tough <laughs> hey, what a fucking Ooh. rough you yeah, know why yeah. Buffalo in Attica prison oh, Attica God. is where they like that is when you think about a, <sighs> a penitentiary like. The worst penitentiary. Yeah. Oh, why? Because the That's highlight of your Attica. day is freezing sausages so you can yeah. use them as Buffalo dildos. Great, yeah. weather. Great, great weather. Great weather. Buffalo out of jail is the worst. The worst. In I mean, all due great respect, city, I like though. Buffalo. Great city. Great, city. great, city. great people. Too. Great people. But. So she, but she had, you know, she comes on the show and she just represents like this, uh, this other side <clears throat> of like life where you're like wow like you're so fucking interesting and she's funny without even trying to be funny because yeah. her stories are like wait what the life that she lived is fucking unbelievable like how old is she get, get back to a light how, how old is she okay so get back to a light so a light a light is he was with the gambino crime family right he was a hitman yeah mm -hmm. There's no doubt that he seemed to have killed and enforced a lot of the rules yeah. physically. Yeah. For so the Gambino family. Yeah, but he was, but he was never going to be a made man because he was, he was Albanian. Albanian. Yeah, Albanian. Yeah, can't. No, so he's a nice guy. Yeah. So we, be, you know, became like, you know, is he a tall guy? How tall? No, short. 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 Yeah, a lot of but, you know, and and but fucking Jack, you want to talk about a handsome man? Holy shit! Yeah, yeah, I mean, when you sit by him, you're like, wow, we, um, you know, suits wow, dressed. Wow, we. 
That's, that's, him, the, that's him right yeah, now. Yeah, that's, that's him right now. He'll fucking beat. I mean, he's a big guy. I mean, he's, he's, he, he was a boxer. He's all 55. So he'll hurt you. He'll yeah. hurt you. Yeah. You know? So, but he told me when I was, you know, I was talking to him just two weeks ago. We were talking and he goes, um, I was telling him about my agent. I was like, ah, I kind of want to let go of my agent. I said, but you know, it's hard to make that call. He was like, send an email. I was like, I can't send an email. That's a bitch move. He goes, Chris, I killed people with baseball bats. I'd send an email. He was like, he was like, don't add any any extra stress to your life. Just get out of it. And I was like, yeah, dude, you're a He's convicted right. murderer. Just saying. He's like, just send words. He goes, everybody, everybody thinks you're a tough guy because you got to call. You got to do a face to face. He goes, you don't. Just send an email. But wh why, why, like, is there all this, why is there all this talk about whether or not this guy was really this or that? I have actually never heard that, to be I honest heard with you. I, I fully believed his stories. And I he, do, too. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I fucking know. I just heard. He was funny because we had asked him questions. Homeless Pimp was asking good questions. Like, you ever, like, in the middle of a kill or, you know, getting rid of it's a like, body? I'm like, doing? you have to take a shit. He was like, yeah. He goes, one time, he goes, we, whatever. They were somewhere in Pennsylvania. They had killed somebody. And they were, like, you know, putting his body away in, like, the early 90s. He was like, and I had to take a shit. He's like, and I just took a shit. I took a shit right on his body, right in the <gasps> hole that we threw him in. I just took a shit right on his body. He goes, I didn't mean disrespectful to the guy. He goes, <laughs> no, but you know, wrong, I can't man. have my DNA out there. So I, we already dug a hole. I'd shit in this guy's body in the fucking hole. <laughs> and I was like, and he was like, you know, he's like, I don't want my shit out there. Next, you know, a bear comes up, eats his body. I'm getting caught. And I was like, uh, and I was like, wow, did that work out for you? He goes, not really. He goes, that's one of the murders they tied me to from the DNA from my shit. <laughs> <laughs> when they found the body. He goes, I didn't realize that shit DNA lasts a long time. Holy I was fuck. like, yeah. God, and, what's he, and, and how, how long did he serve for those murders? He served ten years, I believe. That's a long time. Yeah, but 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 it's like you know, it's all cooperation and role. Mm -hmm. But honestly, man, the the podcast episode was fascinating. I you know, he was saying like some things that were like, I mean, look, he's got a podcast too, and he writes a book, and it's funny, man. He's, ten years, yeah, ten years, yeah. Wow. So um, yeah, again, being wait, he only did five though. Yeah, this guy. I mean, he's okay. Dude, so he's, with he, vibes forever as well. So there's no doubt he was a Gambino guy. I don't know what the fuck. I think it was the, he had a beef with uh, Sammy the Bull. He know. told me, and he said too. He was like, uh, he was like, and there's no like, you know, not that there's no more mafia, but he was like, he was like, yeah. He goes, he goes, you know, the way people get. He goes, he goes, yeah. He goes, uh, he goes, you know, one of the Gotti brothers sent me a fucking computer virus last week. That's how they get you back now. <laughs> <laughs> he, goes, he goes, they sent me a fucking, they hacked my Instagram. That's I lost so two hundred thirty thousand followers. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's hilarious. He was being dead serious. You didn't even think it was funny. He said, that's how they fuck with you now. <laughs> yeah. so I was like, this guy's hilarious. Well, what, what does he know? Why the mafia? Was it just a combination of like racketeering laws and also just social media? Why the mafia? What? Why'd they go Why they away? He said the RICO it's act. It's hard to shake shit down. No, the he Rico said the RICO. Rico. Yeah. What, what about with the unions and stuff? They still well, control the docs. Well, that, right? but he said as far as, he said once once uh, Giuliani started, enforce, once it became uh, federal law that, you know, if you're a mob boss, you're the mob boss, and I commit the crime, you're going to go to prison for bosses. it. It destroyed it. Yeah. So he said then, and then once, yeah. once the head of the family is out, then uh, you know the disorder. There's no leadership because he said he was like, look, he, he said he's. I don't mean disrespectful. He goes, but you know, a lot of the guys that you work with, they're not smart. You know, he goes, they're pretty dumb guys. And he yeah. was like, so if you don't have a boss telling them what to do, he goes, they just get themselves in trouble right away. Yeah, that's. So right. he said, so it's very much like these guys will come out on the street yeah. and commit a crime immediately. Street guys, like street. So and he said, so caught the, up. Yeah. He said, so the, it really can't exist. But he said it does exist now in a digital way. Right. Like it, there's a digital thing. Sure. He was like, you know, like that's where they're that's trying such to get a bummer. into. That's like Russia, where it's not really, it's easier to get away well, with. Well, no, 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 no. He told me, I said, is there anybody to, to watch out in New York? He said, the Russians. He said, yeah. the Russians still, they don't fuck he around. said, they do things a little differently. He goes, yeah. you, don't, you do not, you do not want to piss off a Russian no. gangster. Jesus he goes, because it's relentless. He said, they'll come at you. It's like years, hundreds and thousands of years of just like they just warfare. Like he said, you do not want to fuck with the Russian. Because I asked him, I said, was there anybody you ever afraid of? And he goes, there's a couple of Russian guys that I was like, you know, Holy I feel a little uncomfortable around them. Oh, yeah. wow. But he said, the thing is with guys like that is, you know, they'll send your body, like it'll be, they'll, they'll do it slowly. It's pieces. They, they have no emotion. Yeah. He said, you know, they'll kill you, like, you know, they'll kill you with a coat hanger. Like they'll cut your tonsils out. They'll do things like that. Weird <laughs> shit. You know, they'll Weird rearrange shit. your teeth. Like oh. he does do s stupid shit. God damn. They get very creative. They'll skin your kneecaps. You <laughs> yeah. know, just things where you're like, oh, what? Yeah. You know, come not on. Fun. No, like he said, it fucking doesn't even hurt that much. It's just annoying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got no skin on my kneecaps. <laughs> yeah. These guys like that are fucking. Oh. Uh, so yeah. he was like, you don't want to fuck with them. Pain. You know? But it's been it's 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 an interesting 
But that's what I love about doing the podcast. It's well, like you got these great. characters, man, where it's like, you know. Well, Eli reached out to me, uh, or his, his manager or Did someone. you tell him you think he's a fraud? No, I would never say that. I, I don't, I'm, listen, the I just. The first heard, thing he said when he brought him here, you go, that guy's well, not no, real, was, though. Am I right, Chris? It was a thing on, online with Sammy the Bull and him, because I, I listened to a lot of Sammy the Bull, and he, the, the, but then Sammy the Bull said, I'm not going to say anything. But obviously, a light was the real deal, obviously. Uh -huh. Dude, but he he reached out. Uh, his, his people reached out. Yeah. Well, there's he another guy over here that uh, in California, one of the, like the top top guys, um, Michael. He has a huge podcast. Michael Francesi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Francesi. Yeah, he, he was the real deal too. Francesi's yeah. a real guy. And he's he's out here in, in California. Oh, is he? Yeah, he's out out here in California. He strikes me as a very intelligent guy. Oh like, my, and, he's and, super and, smart. Dude, yeah. Yeah. he was. You know, you know, we think we're making money on a podcast. No. This guy was making thirty million dollars a week on a gasoline scandal. Yeah. <laughs> thirty million dollars a week. Very, very, That's very good. Yeah, yeah. He was a racketeer. He he made yeah. a lot of money. As a, he wasn't even a gangster. What, what's, a, what's that show I went on with that, that Patrick Bet guy? Yeah, yeah. He oh, had yeah. so he had Michael Patrick and Sammy the Bull sit down and talk. Yeah. And they said Michael was just a beast, dude. Yeah, dude. Super beast. Yeah, yeah, he he's he's into he's into Jesus. Very yeah. smart guy though. Very 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 smart guy. Yeah, no, he's he's, he's seventy he's, years old by the way. Looks yeah, pretty damn. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, they're like well, but they're see, like digital, digital superstars. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're digital well, superstars. made now. that's the thing. It's like when you can make money and you're a businessman like that. It's like it doesn't matter. He just he just adapted to the next. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. a multimillionaire now. Off his, this this. It's like when Will Smith was like, oh, Instagram's the new media form and then, and it, then blew everybody out of the water yeah yeah. is, is, is that this dad, what we're doing now his dad his dad was the original gangster yeah the original. his dad never turned on anything his dad yeah, was i like, think his dad what, what what were they was it the Luca i forgot what crime family they were they the were they were the uh wasn't weren't they the bonanno family Maybe or the bonanno. no no they were they were vinny the chin whoever that is good yeah. Colombo, Colombo, Colombo. Sonny Francesi. Yeah, yeah Sonny Francesi. He Could was, there get a more mafia name? Well, everyone says yeah. that guy That guy was the guy who would never turn. He was the old school original gangster. Like, oh, he died in 2020. Wow. In New York. Oh, I wonder if he died in prison or if they let him I out. I don't know that he died. Did he go to prison? Dude, he was born in, in 1917. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's he had to have went to prison. Yeah, he sentenced uh, to four years. He lived he to 103. Holy fuck. He Whoa. generated 30 to 50 million. Oldest dollars. federal inmate in the United States. Hold up. And the only centurion dude, federal was, custody at the time of his Hold release. on, check this out. He was the associate producer of a bunch of movies. This thing is ours. He was uh, Texas Chain Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which earned over 30 million. Unbelievable. That was, over 30 million. He invested eighty thousand dollars. Yeah. Oh, he's yeah, he's, his father said to him, was, if we commit a crime. Ten seconds after that crime, if you ask me anything about that, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna look at you and say I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, yeah there dude, was he lived no, hundred and so, such a crazy. Dude. Fucking what a great life. fucking run! I gotta go do a dating podcast now. You do? I don't know. The Vala files or miss, something like that. It up. Vala, I don't know. Yeah. Dude, do a dating segment with uh, what's TT. 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 We did. We we had um we had uh, uh, a couple of people reach out and try to get a date with uh with TT and we're gonna. We're actually going to pick the winner at, at February fifth at the. And pay for the date, film it. So yeah, we're doing yeah, King of the Scene. Yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah. dude, we had a couple get married from King of the Scene. We put together. Wow, really? We got wow, married. Really? Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Do you Maybe. watch uh, sports? Are you are you watching these yeah. football games? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Santino was with fucking um, homie uh, from uh, uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, Chiefs last yeah. night. Patrick oh, Mahomes was in Travis no. Kelsey's house after the game. Oh wow! Uh, Playing beer pong yeah. with Patrick Mahomes. Damn, fucking guy. Wow. Yeah, I like. I'm a big. Uh, I love sport. I'm a Giants fan, so we're we stink. You guys are fucking we awful. Stink. <laughs> are you a Niners guy or a Broncos guy? Uh, Broncos Rams. Oh, Ram. Okay. Yeah. Rams. Yeah. Rams. Yeah, I Ram. was. Um, I was he in. He posted a, it on his IG chin. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he wouldn't post it on his uh, website. You know. No, you said podcast, right? No. No, 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 no. no. Did you say podcast? No. No. Did okay. I say podcast? I heard no, a podcast. No. You said. Instagram. I said I'm doing it. I got to go. Run he said and do it. No, no, no. Santino. Santino. Podcast. Santino posted the. Yeah picture so um mm. yeah dude but uh yeah man yeah. i don't fucking know yeah look at andrew baby right there kelsey yeah they, they became good friends um so big congrats to my boy all right he's on for yeah. two days yeah that's what it is whitney cummings just comments on everybody's fucking thing <laughs> people are thirsty out there man They're i thought thirst. this was a fake picture to be honest i thought that was not andrew yeah, santino yeah that's why i did a laughing thing i thought it was someone else that looked like him I know, right? It actually that look. He looks like uh, like he's got stuff in his cheeks. Like he's. He's like, not like inside him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's, he's got acorns. He cheeks. looks older. Man. The pandemic that, makes people no, older. Oh, Chin, you did hit him with the. Yeah, laugh I, thought was <laughs> I thought it was fake. I thought it was like a, real, a look alike. That's, That's why. Funny. Wow. All right, baby. Well. Huh? <laughs> I gotta right, go. Chin, give Chris some credit. Seven, no. I gotta go. I'm sorry, babe. Oh, gotta go now. Yeah, look, five minutes. Five I mean, minutes. I was supposed to be there at two o'clock in West Hollywood. 
I, Vilal, John, Nick Vilal, the Vilal files or you know something what, like that. You're gonna it's have probably to a dumb idea. You're going to have to tell him you're going to be super <laughs> late. Why would you do that? Because you're already going to be really late. And what you're going to have to say is you got COVID. <laughs> and you got some aches and pains. Not a big deal. But yeah. you'll be with them. Yeah. Send What's a the text. show called? Never heard of it. Vilal, Vilal Files. Oh, yeah, Vilal Files. Files. You just do L any show? No, I got it because I had a manager. And that manager said, you got to do this one because you got to get a non-comedy audience. So oh, I know you, what, what about Who is your fucking oh manager? God, yep, but you need a non-comedy audience. The I'm Vilal. sure it's great. Nick, Nick has a lot of dating experience. So he likes to think he knows what he's talking about. So the Bachelor. No, is this, have we never heard of this one? Should I not do this one? It's probably big in the, that pop. Like, it's got to be a big. It's how can we check if it's yeah. a big pot or not? I, I don't know. Do how do we check the if there's a, yeah, there's a, Does it have like video? YouTube? Is it video? Yeah, I, I must. Yeah, go to yeah. YouTube. So let's look at, let's look at this YouTube. video. Let's see. If you we, can't check YouTube because like, if you look at like Dak Shepard's podcast or Mark Maron, they're not on video. No, so if he has on video, we'll we'll see. They what said it's on video, so they said to come camera ready. So he has 50,000 subscribers. Okay. And not amazing. A million views. Oh, I mean, two thousand views. Not amazing. Oh, God, seven thousand views. Hold on, keep scrolling down. Uh -huh. yeah. what, what, what does the show have? One hundred nine, right? Pair. Mm. I mean, some are hit hitters and some are not. <laughs> I told him. I told him that we'd fucking be there. Well, tell, you should tell go. Him Super Just Mario tell him, COVID. Tell him it's going to be late. Should I tell him I got aches? Just tell him you got some aches. No, I would say he's going to listen to this podcast. Personally, <laughs> personally, <laughs> no. You can we can edit this out, but I'd lie. Oh. <laughs> that, that show's not big at all, dude. I mean, it's fifty thousand. I'm sure he's a good well, guy. But see, that's the thing, though, too. Like, I'm not going to name names, but that's the thing, too. Like, even like I know this may be very inside comedy, but that's the thing, too. Even with managers and agents. This is a peer-driven thing. Like they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Yeah, they don't like, know hey, shit about the go podcast. Go give an hour and a half to this, and no disrespect to that, but it's like that doesn't help. It's you not. I'm gonna sell no tickets yeah, off yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, need yeah. a no, 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 no. I have, I have no manager. Good. I, I've gotten rid of that. I have. I have a manager consigliere. I got no. I have an age. Well, technically, right now we got a gap in time, baby. Yeah. But I have. I'm making a decision tonight. Okay. Um, but I, if you don't go CA, I'm gonna fight you. You're out of your mind. If you don't I'm gonna go fight Justin, you. If you don't go with Justin, mind. I'm gonna fight you. You're out of your mind. He works with me, Tim Dillon. What are you doing? We'll see. All right, give us an um, event so you can get out of here. Too. Yeah, right. and go do that podcast. <laughs> I know. <I'm> sorry, <laughs> man. Well, you know what this is. So right. this is a sad one. Louis yeah. Anderson had passed away from yeah. cancer at the age of 68. Yeah. Comedy store original. Mm -hmm. Never met him. Great yep. guy. I did a couple. Did a couple shows with him. Was a great guy. I did a show with him one time. Super nice. I did a show with him one time. A benefit, and. And he, uh, I've never seen this before. Actually, my friend Sam did it once, but uh, he, he wept on stage talking about his mother. Oh, wow. About his mother protected him and his brother and sister from his tyrannical dad. Jesus Christ. Wow. His dad used to get drunk and be yeah. married. And she said she, she protected us. And he's, he was hilarious. Then it was, this is, was a benefit for uh, battered women. Jesus. And then he spoke about his mother. And wept on stage, and then brought it back to, to fucking comedy. Wow. And I just, I remember genius. going, That's I was like, Master. this motherfucker can really do something. We talked for a long time about that, and I was yeah. like, I've never seen that. And, Good. Uh, All right, Louis Anderson. Got you. We're gonna fly through him for a Christmas. Mm -hmm. So, you, gay man, uh, Louis Anderson, straight man. Yes, very gay. gay very gay man. Oh, he's gay. Oh, is he? Is he? I didn't know. I didn't know that either. Is he out? Oh yeah. Yeah. He's very oh yeah. He, he was out with and, Brian Kelly. If you ever saw probably. Baskets, Brian, <laughs> <laughs> if, you ever see, if you ever see Baskets, he played, Moments, he played, he played, up, he right? played he, no, he played a woman. He played, yeah. wasn't transgender. On his TV played, show, yeah. Yes, he played his mother. He was a woman on it. He played, a, and he does an incredible yeah, job. Yeah, he won a bunch of awards. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. fuck. Okay. Um, you don't all right, so what do you got, Mark go Cuban? One. Yeah, so Mark Cuban oh, wow. recently opened up his own pharmacy online oh. where he will put up the price of generic drugs and then show the markup that his business is going to put on it in order to sustain the business. And he's showing that a lot of these pharmaceutical companies are marking up their products to 100 to 1,000%. Oh, yeah. yeah. I love capitalism. Revenue. You get a capitalism. guy like this who comes along yeah. and goes, fuck you guys. Go up a little yeah. bit. Mm -hmm. Go up so little this little could potentially change the Go way... Ph like pharmaceutical oh, companies sell their drugs. I think it was a video. You, you, you get like okay. like that, of yeah. course, because a lot yeah. of times they repackage scroll down drugs. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. look at that. It says, uh, no, scroll back up to oh, the top of there. Right there. For example, Lukumia drug is priced at $47 a month on Mark Cuban's thing compared to 9000 bucks retail. Thank you. That's mm -hmm. fucking See, that's, the, that's the beautiful thing about a guy like a Mark Cuban. Like when you have all that money like that, yeah. like, you can really just tell the insurance companies, no, fuck you. I have more money than you. It says and the markup on generics you know? average at least 100% 
Some cases, a thousand percent. And this is where this guy is taking his money and making the world a better place. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I fucking love yeah, that shit. I love Mark, Mark Cuban. Cuban. The company doesn't process love. insurance claims and requires customers to pay for their medication. They're motivated by account. pharma, bro. That guy, that piece of shit. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Scrolly. That's cool. Good. I like wow. Mark Cuban. So a man in the UK uh, has this weird thing where he'll go on Grindr and Ha set up consensual sex dates with different men. He would then, after go onto his grinder profile, change the bio to s say that he's an escort and how much he charges by the hour in order to blackmail these men. If the men do not pay him what he wants, he yeah, then he'll put proceeds out their information. to like send it to their girlfriends, <laughs> yeah. their wives, their boyfriends, work mm -hmm. people that they work with, or he threatens that he's gonna oh, I know have the them beat is. up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he a was uh, recently arrested because uh, a few of his victims had come forward saying, "This is the man who has been blackmailing me." Yep. They arrested him while he was at home with his girlfriend. All right, wow. so he wasn't gay, yeah. so nobody would actually. No, they would have sex. Oh, yeah. Okay, he so, so he would have yeah. sex with you. Got it. Yes. Oh, shit. Got it. Can't, after, can't that. Be after the fact, he yeah. can't be telling people. Why yeah. is the logo for Grinder a Batman helmet? <laughs> I don't know. I've never it's a seen mask. that. Isn't that weird? All right, I, yeah. Is that, is that really the logo? It looks like Groot. <laughs> yeah, it, it does. does. <laughs> it's a good call. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anwarsa Gruder. Bar. Yeah, it is. Grinder. Right. Yeah. Is I that made, gay? I made is an Grindr account once as a joke. Yeah, it's really. just for gaming. Okay. God, I bet that app is. Yeah. Wow. Do you ever go on it? <laughs> <laughs> I, went, I made an account as a goof once. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. Sure, listen, you meet goof. some nice people. Well, but you just get a ton of dick pics. It's all, it's all sex. The thing is, nobody wants to have a conversation. No, it's guys. It's, it's just guys. guys. They want to get straight yeah. to the point. guys yeah. to entertain Chris, the conversation. you put your dick on there, and, and you're doing pretty well, dude. Mm -hmm. Put that. Put your butt on there, dude. I'll put anything on there. I'll yeah. put a, I got one of my... Uh, my butt has a couple no, of skin tags. No, Brendan punching you, and then you just come. Oh. No, dude. Ooh. Right away. <laughs> no, just put frozen sausages as your avatar. Dude, I know. Well, I asked T.T. Jerry if she wanted a grinder account. She said no. She Why? Because she said she said she she's like the guy. What she likes is to she likes to hook up with men in alleys, men that have like she was like she's like uh, she likes to be a little bit street. She likes the street of it all. Yeah, she, yeah. She's got a couple of guys. Like she said, she said you know she she knows she knows because I asked her. I said, "Am I gay? Because I feel like I'm on the fence a little bit. I feel like with the right wind gusts, I can be blown over." She said, "No, you're not gay because you're so comfortable." with you know sexuality she's like you're not gay she's no. like but a lot of guys like the wound up she said most of her boyfriends in prison were had full families like they were like you know had wives uh -huh. and she said and even the guys in the street that most of the guys she hooks up with have they have girlfriends and wives yeah the, the guys that are always like super anti-gay i'm like he's gay yeah hey, Any guy honestly, that the way we joke around yeah. like we're, we're clearly not yeah gay. We're i clearly honestly not homophobic if either. we were in jail the for guys who were like oh that's gay guy. dude yeah like, you're a gay man yeah, yeah yeah like what demons are you fighting right yeah. like how I, cause I, I agree with you. Like, you can put me in jail. I'm just not attracted to men. I'm just not. I mean, I'm six months. Not. I mean, yeah. No. You got a blowout ass. Let's see what happens. I just that the dude, hair that, on the that face. would happen. Like on my some of my cheer teams, like some of like the straightest dudes on like fucking on earth would fucking. But they pull joined, some of those dudes. Yeah, because they joined the team because they, that they're gay. And they, they were like, maybe I'll join the. It's like all flirting. No, on the edges. like They've I mean, they're all like no, they're but those same, those same dudes. Are married with kids now. I know, but, but when they were cheerleading, but when they, they were back like when they were dicks back in the mouth, yeah, yeah, that's so interesting. I had this dude that I cheered with that was hooking up with the football players at our because it was a, you know, podunk town that we were in, you know, in there, Texas or whatever. The cheerleaders with the Bro, male cheerleaders, I would see, I would the see, football players. Uh, yeah, so he the said that. I with, and I would see football players walking out of his dorm room in the morning really? as I'm going to get breakfast. really, yes, damn, I yes. see, I. I I don't know. I don't know if they're around that culture all the time. Like, nah, mm. you're either attracted to them or not. They're like, Dave's cool, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just yeah. like that. You know, Dave, Dave's a Dave, good guy. Dave ain't that bad. Dave can come in my life. Yeah. Right, what do yeah. you got, Jen? So a drunk Irish man was on a flight from Dublin to New York, and he's currently facing 20 years in prison for mooning a uh, flight attendant. He was throwing like empty drink bottles at other passengers, very unruly. The captain actually had to take a break, go back to that guy's seat to talk to him like, hey, can you calm down? We're almost there. And he proceeds, yeah. he proceeds to threaten <laughs> to hit the pilot. So he's now That's facing what it is. Years. Nobody, now, nobody swung on his ass? Now, and now B, yeah. you're on that flight. Yeah. I'm fucking that guy up so I get to my destination. Is that what you're doing? 100%. <laughs> I live for that moment. Yeah. Yeah, because... I feel like if you're on that flight, you're you're taking that. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna put him in a nice squeeze. You're gonna grip him. And I assume everyone's gonna applaud. Afterwards. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna give him a nice uh -huh. grip down. Yeah, yeah. 
I'm going Instagram live. Fucking yeah. Paul. And I don't want to hear that. That's going to be me and Chris I, and Dion go, hey, get your camera. I read are you that headline. Seat belt him? I, you coming up behind him and yeah. seatbelting him? What are you going to do? No, I'm just I'm getting his neck. You're just going to go and just yeah, go, you're going to take him out. What am I doing? You're just going to put that and pressure on his neck though. and make him like tap. No, I'm just going to choke him right out. Just right out? Yeah. Just bring him. I got to be honest. Chris, have you ever been in a fight? A f- uh, yeah, a couple of fights. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe three you or four see, you fights. You don't see like a fighter. Or I'm like two for two. Some would say one and three. I say I'm two for two. Well. <laughs> <laughs> One's <and three's> bad. <laughs> He's an athlete. He's, you know, he'll, he'll throw down. I say, kid. But that <laughs> flight, that flight, I mean, it sounds fun. I mean, honestly, like I would be hysterical laughing. If some Irish passenger start, just started mooning everyone, and hitting yeah, me you know, too. I've got hit by a bottle. It'd be, like, this is it'd be fun. Yeah, it'd you know, make time so fly. So much fun. Yeah, I agree. until he bullies somebody or tries. To that's too much. That's my problem. Yeah. Then I, then until I, he gets racist. That's yeah. where I draw Don't be the bullying. Yeah. Otherwise, I gotta fight you. you, know? yeah, then, you I, then I'd get involved. Yeah. Uh, do you want to keep doing more or? Uh, he has to get, Since he has to get, get out. out. I gotta change my whole. Okay. I mean, I don't know what I'm doing. There he is. Oh, look at that. Send me a text, community. Um, yeah, dude. You know. Oh, what shows? Yeah, I'm trying to look at tickets. There you go. Yeah, we'll take your Okay, there we go. There we go. Atlanta. Atlanta, you got, you got Atlantic, Atlantic City. 7 and 10 o'clock. Borgata. Borgata, we're sold out. Beacon, we're sold out. Washington, D.C. Warner Tabernacle. Warner Atlanta, we need to get on. Atlanta, D.C., we need help with. Royal, Royal Oak. Oak. Royal Oak's doing good. Hey, how about this? Good news for Royal Oak. They just said today at that theater and all of Michigan, no vaccine mandate, no COVID test. You can come in like it's 2019. You just walk in, no masks. Whatever wow. you want to do. So that's wow. good news for Royal Oak. Some of the fans have been saying, like, you fucking vaccine mandate or you don't have a vaccine mandate. Royal Oak is like it, like the pandemic never happened. So come get tickets. That's Agora March 4th. Theater, Nashville, Tennessee, Ryman. Right? You're all over. Uh, oh, what Wednesday- a great fucking logo. Thanks, dude. Uh, Wednesday is Shop and Friends at the Hollywood Improv. 20 tickets left. It's also Brian Callen's birthday. Wow. We'll have some savages 55. there. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a good night. It's Brian Callen's birthday. The big boys are coming out for that. 20 tickets left, Hollywood Improv, one show, one night only, 8 p.m. And then Atlanta, Georgia is February 3rd through the 5th. Sacramento just went on sale February 24th through 26th. Tickets at FATKZ.com. Uh, you can watch the last Cal Bass Fight Companion UFC 270. Chris D'Elia, Brian Callen, and myself right now. And we have Food Truck Diaries with Sugar Sean is out right now on Thick Boy. And then we have a huge guest doing a food truck tomorrow. So Oof. keep you guys posted. Las Vegas, Nevada, me and Sam Tripoli, Diversion Amusements. We're doing two shows. First, he's going to come up with a conspiracy theory. I am going to debate him. I'm going to try to debunk it. And then we're doing stand-up together, Diversion Amusements, Las Vegas, Sam Tripoli, February 19. Appleton, Wisconsin, Skyline Comedy Club, March 3rd to the 5th. Louisville, Kentucky, Louisville Comedy Club, March 17 to 19. Miami, Florida, March 25th to the 27th. My favorite place in the world. And then February 25th and 26th, I'll be in... Kansas City, Missouri at the Comedy Club of Kansas City. And then March 10th through 12th, I'll be at uh, the Blue Room Comedy Club in Springfield, Missouri. Boom. All right. Fuck yeah. Christy, we love you, brother. Love, love you, brother. babe. Don Chris, DePetto hey. was, was writing a script the entire show. Don, yeah. Don, Don. He's like he's, a legend. That's what it is, dude. Seems like a good man. Christy like D, go see you, him, baby. folks. We love you. Thank you, baby. I love you.